and this is, I think for anyone that is wanting to get into making reels, Mm -hmm. you have to be consistent and you have to just keep plugging along because Mm -hmm. like we said earlier, you don't know which one is going to go viral and then start that snowball. So I started with like four, 3000 followers and I'm at like 50 now or 51. I think I just hit. Um, and that's all happened within probably the last six to eight months, less than a year. Um, and it's all from reels. And we're back. We're back with another episode of the IQ project. I'm right here with my co-host Ricky Tat. Yo, yo. Romeo Shades. What's up? And our special guest, Alex. What's up? My name is Josh. Again, for all your tattoos needs, please follow us on Instagram. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Ricky. Uh, thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Dude, I'm getting brain farts today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our special guest today is Alex Coulter, right? That's Tattoo right, yeah. artist for 10 years, guys. And he came across our page, uh, wanted to do this podcast, and we checked out his work. He has a special app, website, that we want to talk about to help all you tattoo artists. Um and he's got a hell of a great stories that we talk behind the camera. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one, man. Um, yes, Alex, welcome, bro. Thanks. Very excited to be here. Yeah, Appreciate man. It. Definitely yeah. not what I expected vis- <laughs> you know, visually. <laughs> I was expecting the mullet, bro. You mean the mullet? Yeah. yeah the mullet had to go. Yeah. Yeah, Shout was... out your Instagram real quick so people can. Yeah. Uh, so my personal Instagram is Alex Coulter Tattoo. Uh, C-O-U-L-T-E-R for Coulter. And then uh, the business is Inked in Tools, and it's a booking and business management software system for tattoo artists. That's awesome, yeah, bro. So it's a tattoo yeah. artist and an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Yeah. Tattoopreneur, bro. A tattoopreneur. Yeah. 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 We'll talk about that a little bit more, man. <laughs> uh, shoot. How was the drive all the way? Where did you come from? Uh, I came from Cyprus. Uh, my studio is in Huntington Beach, but I live in Cyprus now. All right, cool. We just moved there about six months ago. All right. Cool. Cul-de-sac, suburb life. Nice. Yeah. So <laughs> had to go. <laughs> yeah, I had. When I moved in the neighborhood, they said, no, no, no. The mullet's got to go. <laughs> so before we get to your story, man, we just want to, like, update everybody, which, you know, which we've been up to, you know. Uh, uh, I think these guys went to a convention this weekend, huh? You guys want to talk a little bit? Go. Yeah, so I actually, I didn't know about it until Romeo told me. Um, and then I found out it was, they kept it all low-key, right? They didn't really tell anyone about yeah, it. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? What was it called? Backyard Boogie. Right there in, in LA. In LA. LA. Mm-hmm. Downtown LA, it looked like. Yeah, it was downtown. It looked hood. But it was like Bro, in the cut. Like, no, like an like underground like, convention? I like, like it. Kind somewhat. of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was basically like all Chicano style. So just like basically that like real gangster kind of tattooing. And a lot of like legends in their tattooing, like a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah. yeah. Freddie Negretti was there, Mako, Johnny Quintana. Mm-hmm. Even Chewy. Yeah. All the cryptic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it was, it was thrown by cryptic, right? Cryptic tattoo. They're hosting it. Yeah, they're hosting it. Yeah, so yeah. It was that whole style. I've never heard of that. That's pretty different. Yeah. You know, that's cool. And in our show, they had lowriders there, or like yeah, they had some kind of old school cars. Mm-hmm. I heard you guys got drunk. <laughs> yeah, we pregame with oh. Trulies, bro. <laughs> you guys pregame with Trulies? Don't ever say that again <laughs> on this podcast, dog. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't trying to get bloated, you know? <laughs> exactly, bro. <Yeah. laughs> Fuck, but measure headaches, that's a lot of sugar, bro. Yeah, yeah. You guys need it. to try these new modelos, man. Do you drink? Yeah, you a drink? little bit, like oh. one day a week. Oh. But nice. on that day. Truly? I go for it. <laughs> He's like, I don't usually day. drink, but on that day. <laughs> it's Trulies. <laughs> I wish I had the mullet back. <laughs> Ironically, I did have some Trulies last night. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> am I the only man out here? Uh, anyways. Bro, you drink White Claws. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> when the fuck did I ever do that? Last time you bought a pack of White Claws. Ooh, the truth. No, bro, don't, don't. <laughs> don't put me out on camera like that, dog. We'll talk about you, homie. I, I stick to my fucking... Uh, what are those? The 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 dad? What are the dad? Oh, no. happy, happy dads. dads. Happy dads. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like them. I uh, I'm starting reason. not to like them anymore. Yeah. They were a little fad. Too like citrusy or acidic or something. Acidic. Because uh, like I was getting some nasty acid reflex. Yep. Yeah. Fuck that. Like that. No. No. How old are you? Huh? How old are you? Fuck. Going on fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty five. You start getting the yeah. acid reflux and the. I mean, I get it from regular (laughs) beer. That's why I kind of stopped drinking beer. I moved Uh, on to liquor. Nice. So beer, I can't do no because I just get bloated and I just get that acid reflex. Got to carry those tums with you. Yeah, Yeah. I do. do. (laughs) Did you show that tattoo to Johnny Quintana? Yeah, yeah, I showed him. He was uh, mentioning, this is a a painting that he did. And then Ricky, Ricky tattooed it on me. 
And he was like, uh, honestly, he was looking at the tones right here in the, in the blouse the, or the shirt. Yeah. The, the clown part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Should we try to convince him to be on the podcast? Or? Yeah, I did. He said, um, right now he's taking more family time, but he said he's going to talk to us later more about it. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, you That's guys cool. have nice work. I was, oh, I was looking it. at you guys' tattoos. Thanks, man. Very nice. Thank you, man. Well, you, do you like my tattoos? I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I got no tattoos, dude. It's called the dark or the brown. Uh, no. Did you, you know that coming <laughs> in? Did Golden you know one. that I had? No. 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 Are you judging me? Mm. No. No? No. <laughs> my yeah. man, Alex. Yeah, I wish he had the <laughs> mullet, bro. I like him more, bro. You know? Yeah. The mullet had to go. Had to go. Yes. Yeah. So tell us, man, uh, where, where do you work at? Where do you... Um, Right now, you said you're a different location, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just uh, started in a private studio, and um, nice. man, a year ago, I would have made fun of me for saying that. But uh, <laughs> I worked in the shop for ten years. Uh, I apprenticed at that shop uh, for two years. I did a year apprenticeship before that. Uh, the shop is called the Tattoo Gallery in Huntington Beach. Okay. Um, great guys there. Still, still cool with all them. And yeah, just I needed um, space for Inked and Tools, which is the the software business. Mm-hmm. And was kind of ready to take that step into just doing something more private. I, I mainly tattoo my own clientele. And, um, yeah, just kind of taking my life in a, a different direction currently. So. You started tattooing when you were 25? Or? Uh, I started apprenticing then. So I, I don't consider, like, I don't think I've been tattooing 10 years. Because mm. I look at the apprenticeship part as not tattooing. It's just kind of something that, like, my mentors would probably yell at me for if I yes. <laughs> said like, oh, you know, so yeah. I, you know, I've been tattooing for seven or eight. I'm bad at math, but somewhere around there. And then apprentice for three years before that. Okay. Nice. Yeah. But I was at that shop for about 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So you got some good stories about your apprenticeship? Oh, great stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it was a, I can say with certainty the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and the best thing I've ever done, like changed me into the man I am today uh made me grow up a lot like just was so good for me and who i am now uh I, i'm so grateful for it even even though like i said it was really hard so it was more of a traditional mm-hmm. apprenticeship yeah, yeah and and you know I, I have to clarify too like it's not as bad as they had it right yeah um but as far you know everyone gets the apprenticeship i think they they need and uh I definitely, yeah, it was old school and that, yeah, I was there in the beginning, seven days a week, I think maybe a year in, I was getting a day off. Uh, So I worked six days a week, usually like 10 hour days, Um, didn't get paid, you know, and eventually got to tattoo a little bit and get a little bit of money from that. And, Mm. you know, that was... Yeah, it was rough times, but yeah. <laughs> Would <laughs> you me do every- it all over again? A hundred percent. Yeah. That's what matters. Yeah. You know, because there's no apprenticeship that is cookie cutter. Nope. Everybody's a different one. He was, Romeo was one of our apprentices. He was our second one. Mm-hmm. And now we have the third one and <clears throat> every apprenticeship is different. We yeah. can't, we can't, uh, you guys are not robots. We're not robots, I should say. Yeah. You know? So everybody has their different moods, different ambitions, different wants. And so that's why everybody's just different, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think taking on that mentorship role is like really important. It's a, it is a now like looking back at my own apprenticeship and then we've we had an apprentice uh, in between, you know, or after me and uh, seeing it through that lens. It's like what a huge responsibility and task Like you think as the apprentice, like it's hard on you. It's hard on the mentors, too, because they have this pressure to teach you, mold you, shape you. You know, you're going to carry on their their legacy, you know, so. Yeah, there's how many times did you almost quit? I never I never wanted to quit. I had breakdowns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you relate to that, yeah, yeah. that when I'd go out to the dumpster to take the trash out, they're like, So how long were you crying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh I definitely you know, I, my wife, you know, we were boyfriend we were dating at the time, boyfriend, girlfriend. We broke up for a period of time while I was apprenticing. I just felt like I didn't have any time to give her. I made no money. I was had nothing to offer because everything went into the tattoo shop. So mm-hmm. I didn't think it was fair to keep her in a relationship and like an idiot broke up with her. We we're both miserable, got back together and now we're <laughs> married. But, you know, I, it, it definitely made me reprioritize everything in my life. And I had to give everything to it. I don't think a lot of people understand the sacrifice you have to make as an apprenticeship. No, right? it, it is all in. I mean, um, there's apprenticeships where you, it, it doesn't doesn't go like that, you know, yeah. but that are a little easier and. I'm not here to say one's better or not, but yeah, the one I went hard through to say. Was, was hard yeah. for sure. But it's definitely so relieving to hear that you kind of go through the same path or went through the same path that 
almost I did, you know, it's super, super cool that, you know, I could kind of relate to what you're saying. It's like, yeah, but, definitely. Yeah. If you, if you haven't gone through it, you don't know, yeah. but bro, yeah. I didn't go through one and I'm like a mad respect to the three that are, go- the, you know, the two that passed already through it and the one that's currently, because I'm like, shit, I try to put my, sh- I have to try to, I try to use empathy towards that, right? Like, how would I feel if I'm in their shoes and I'm not making any money, you know? And then it's a whole year and it's month four or five and you you still look at month six more months to go, you know? Oof, that, that's I, it. I, and yours respect. was two years. Yeah, and I didn't have a guaranteed end date. It was like, if you're, when you're ready, you're ready. You yeah. Know, it might be two years, might be six. I don't think it was going to be six, you know, yeah. but it was, you know, I, I remember having a point. I was in line at Chipotle getting food for the shop. And at that point, I think I was a year in. So I'd done a year at another shop before that. And then now a year at this shop and thinking like, how many more years do I have? And I had this weird thought of like, how many more times I have to buy grown men their lunch? (laughs) You know, (laughs) that's what it boils down to though. Stupidest thing that got to me. I'm like, Like, oh man, I like broke down a little bit, but I knew in my mind there was nothing, (laughs) like literally nothing that was going to stop me from getting to that goal of being a tattoo artist and so in my mind it was like they are going to have to kill me <laughs> to make me quit i am not stopping and so once you accept that in your head it's like okay like they could be the worst day in the world you didn't kill me today so i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> like, go. Damn, yeah so it's like a mental fucking training you have to tell yourself you have yeah. to get into that mental state yeah, yeah. You know. Like one way or another, I'm gonna get there. Like I'm gonna be that that tattoo artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like yep. Romeo's situation. He would work from five a.m. to like what eleven or twelve. Well, uh, it'd be like ten to get here by eleven. But yeah, I'd be getting here at what twelve one. Yeah, yeah, and then stay here till like ten at night. Yeah. Well, I would stay here till you guys were done. That way, I could drop your station. This guy pretty much fucking like raised the level for apprentice apprenticeships here, and um, yeah. Uh, we can't duplicate him, obviously, you know, but uh, we're grateful for him, bro. And and he knows that behind closed doors, right. we have a lot of, you know, gratitude towards the amount of effort because we had never told him to be here till we <laughs> till we leave. And yeah. now reflecting back, I'm like, holy shit, he he did stay. You know all what I'm saying? All we wanted was five days. Bro. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't fucking know that. I was like, like, five days. like God damn, no so one told I was me. here every day, dog. <laughs> From one to eight. <laughs> we're like, fucking kick it out of here already, man. Yeah, that's good, though, man. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think we had you like six days or something, but it was your thing where you had you set yourself certain things. Have, but anyways, that's day off, that's the past. I take pride in that shit. That's dope. Yeah. I love that. That's fucking dope. Yeah. And yeah. the side hustles you have to do, like you know, I, I sold a I had a really cool Cadillac. I sold that, so I'd have money. I lived at a friend's house for free. You know, you could do whatever oh, you have to do to yeah. make it work. Uh, and then towards the end, I ran out of money, and so I <laughs> this is super embarrassing, but it's just a good like humbling story. I knew how to make balloon animals. I'd done it in high school as like a side gig at downtown Disney okay. in one of the restaurants. That's where so, I know you from. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, and near the end of my apprenticeship and I had, you know, I, I had to make money and you can actually make good money doing it in yeah. a little amount of time. So I would go like two days a week, leave the shop a little early, drive to Anaheim, go do balloon animals for little kids. And then, and the funniest thing is like, they didn't tell me till way later. They were like, like, dude, we were actually like proud of you for doing that. Cause that's humil- humiliating. Like yeah. we would never do that. <laughs> you know, I, they're like, we would have sold drugs before we did that. <laughs> but you know, but at the time they would give me shit for it. Like yeah. I'd be like, oh, I gotta go make balloons. Like, wow, you must really not want this. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you would have been out there be like, here's your balloon, here's a business card for your parents. <laughs> I got recognized once by a client at the shop. They're like, aren't you an apprentice of the shop? <laughs> like, shit. That's someone else. <laughs> we all look alike over there. Yeah. Everybody's got mullets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I didn't hey, have a mullet. Though. I was just like, man, that's, that's Bro, tight, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. That's how much you wanted it. You know what I'm saying? And you're right. It's still a hustle. The tips were probably amazing for that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you got to make a little boy happy, you know what I'm saying? A little yeah. girl, whatever. But yeah, that's dope, bro. The best of the rich parents who like want their kids now. They're like, go make my kid a balloon now. I'm like, I'm going to make my way around the restaurant. I'll be over there. And then I had this lady go like, I'll give you $50 now and $50 when you get to my table. If you come right now, I was like, on my way. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wasn't even interested in this. Here, you get half a leg, girl. <laughs> it's a snake. <laughs> <laughs> The, when I took my kids to um, to Disneyland, we went to eat in the in the morning 
at our Denny's and there was somebody there making balloons. So I remember that. Yeah. And I tipped the person because I was like, man, they're doing their hustle, you know, give them like 20 bucks, you know. Yeah. And they just do it for tips. So yeah. I was like, that's cool, that's man. Like, if any of you out there looking for a good job and you don't want to. It's don't know quick. what to do and it's learn know. some balloon animals man it's how much the balloons cost not much you not know much. Just five bucks for a big old bag and do you still have the ability to do them i could whip it out of <laughs> yeah. My, yeah 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 but i hey, i gave you all the stuff bro, away I'm gonna i hung give you up a... my balloon apron for good <laughs> bro that would go fucking viral bro <laughs> oh, on your <laughs> you I can't, can't. Yeah, yeah, come on mr seven million views. <laughs> <laughs> i cannot do that yeah. no <laughs> I, I retired okay. my balloon apron for yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though man yeah so it's crazy to see like yeah you have to do something else when you're doing an apprenticeship because you i think i'm a strong believer that if you don't go all in you don't get the results you want yeah you know 100 percent. yeah yeah because i didn't have an apprenticeship either and I, I keep telling romeo what i learned in five years he's already got it in the first year yeah so you imagine that's four years of less struggle you know, he can start charging a little bit more now and he just um, accumulate that money. Then you're going to realize that apprenticeship was fucking, you know, golden. You know? Oh, yeah. The trade off is worth it. Exactly. You know? you're, you're getting knowledge from, you know, my shop was uh, four mentors and I was apprenticed under all of them. Right. And between them, it's like almost 100 years of tattooing knowledge, you know, like yeah. Yeah, you can't put a price on that. Most yeah. of the guys there, they're like vets yeah. in the game. Yeah. And they all work together That's for that long for the most part. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so. And that's a lot of time because um, from your apprenticeship till then. So, like, you know, tell us about how it was after that. You know, you're just, I guess, your career wise, where you're just tattooing. And then when did that spark of you wanting to be a, what did what'd you call it? A tattoo? Tattoopreneur. Tattoopreneur. Yeah. Um, well, I, I we kind of talked about it a little earlier. The owner of the shop uh, and, you know, one of my mentors, his name is Dan McNabb, and he created Rinse Cup Cleanup. It's that powder that you put in the rinse cup after to solidify it. It's a necessity now. Yeah. And so I, I was apprenticing while he was developing that and coming out with it. And uh, so I kind of, I think that kind of like lit a little spark in, in the back of my mind of like, oh, you can tattoo and have a business. And, and kind of seeing that like, I kind of looked forward and saw that a lot of tattoo artists, no matter how successful, like some of them did other things too and mm -hmm. created products for the tattoo industry or, or even outside of it, you know? And so, um, but as I started, I just, you know, built my career slowly. I focused on the tattooing and the other stuff was kind of in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. first, you know, five, six, seven years was just tattooing and, um, you know, building my clientele through walk-ins. And I think it, it didn't hurt that I tattooed in the city that I grew up in. So having, mm. you know, clients that, you know, like, oh, people you went to high school with, little things like that, I think helped, which is why I'd be afraid to move to a new city ever and start, like, as much as I'd love to move yeah. out of state yeah. one time, like, like like everyone else, like, are you starting from scratch? And so it's not just the time I was tattooing, it's how much time I've lived in that city and built relationships over that time. That's a lifetime of potential networking that has helped me get to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, how do you, how do you start from zero in a whole new place? So, yeah, that's like a whole nother journey itself. <clears throat> you probably had to like dedicate, like going out there once a month to that state, you know, to just build just clientele build and then yeah. go from it's there. Kind of like what Ignacio is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You're doing that. Ignacio Flores. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I like Ignacio a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we had yeah, him he on just here. bought land and, uh, Texas. Ooh, good for him. Yeah, so he's trying to make that move as well. So he's been going. I was watching a little side note. I was watching Lone Stars, uh, something on yesterday on channel, and so they're they're going through different spots in in Texas. Uh -huh. There's so much beautiful land over there. I kind of want to buy over there, bro. So I'm yeah. like kind of hating on him right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of land in yeah. this country. I mean, people think like, oh, we're so overpopulated. No, dude, there's so. Do much. a road trip across the country. There there's go. a lot of space. There's a lot of space in California. Yeah, you go yeah. an hour that way, and it's. Yeah, land. I mean, just go an hour this way, and there's yeah, a lot. Yeah, I probably like, pointed in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm like to Pasadena. <laughs> so much land in Pasadena. Yeah, <laughs> get a fucking 300 square foot house for fucking half a million dollars. <laughs> for real. So you're yeah. seeing him. You're seeing you know one of your mentors being an entrepreneur, starting a product, bro. Um, yeah. You're tattooing. You're building your clientele. Uh, we always like to ask, you know, because this is. I'd like to implement business into it. Um, did you have any business background or you just learned it through them just kind of on the go? That's a good question. Um, 
I've always kind of had like an entrepreneur mindset, like uh, even at a young age. I remember I came up with an idea for, uh, you know, the garage doors when they close and there's a little laser. Yeah. And then like if you're a kid, you had to jump over it and not get <laughs> hit your head on the garage doors and went down. Yeah. So I like at a, I mean, I was a child and I was like, there should be a thing where you push the button and it's got a 30 second delay and then you can walk out of your garage and then the garage door closes. Mm. So like. I don't know if that exists or not, but so from an early age, it's always been ideas and ideas. I've always started little brands and businesses and um, Inkton Tools is just the first one that's like stuck and actually stuck. gone. But it's been a, a lifetime of like, I remember in college, cause I went to art school and it was winter break. So you only had, it was only like maybe a month or two long. And in that amount of time, I was working at a restaurant and I came up with an idea for a restaurant. I lived in San Francisco. I worked on Hate Street and there was no hot dog restaurant on Hate Street. And I knew tourists stay there and then go look around the city for the day and families needed like a quick meal, right? Because I worked at a, on a restaurant. I worked in a restaurant on that street. Anyway, so I like found a, a, a location on Hate Street, talked to the landlord. He said, put together a business plan. I worked with the Small Business Association of San Francisco downtown. They helped me create a business plan. I'm going to farmer's markets, looking at vendors. I'm like talking to possible investors and stuff. I'm like going through it all in like a month or two period. And then like it kind of hit me. I'm still in school. Like, there's, <laughs> there's no way. And, and my mom later told me in life, she's like, I prayed actually that it wouldn't work out because you would have never finished school. Yeah. You would have been a restaurateur or like you, Different that would have been your life forever. But I just, it was more always for me more than just an idea. It was, let's put it into practice. Let's start at step one and, and go from there. What does it take to make this happen? And let's go. And so that, yeah, I've always kind of had that like entrepreneur mindset even prior to tattooing. Uh, it sounds like you add practicality to everything. Like, okay, I got an idea. All right, well, we'll re reverse engineer it. What does it take to get it going? Well, I need, I'm going to need a business plan. I'm going to need, uh, find out how much this costs, how much the stand cost, you know, seeing where all the traffic was coming. You know what I'm saying? That's all business yeah. stuff that you just had the knack for it. Yeah. You were going to school for art or business? For art. Yeah. Ooh. I went to an art school. I got my bachelor's in uh, illustration and oh, fine snap. art painting. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I wouldn't, uh, that I would not do again. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. But do you feel like it's helped uh, when it comes to tattooing? It did because I, as much, I was always an artistic kid and I always loved drawing. I did not have a natural skill when it came to art that I believe can be learned and, and was learned mm. for me. Like mm. I had a teacher who said it should be taught in elementary school. Kids can learn basic things like uh, perspective, you know, so, stuff, something is smaller if it's further away and bigger if it's up close. A little kid can learn that. The fundamentals of art can be taught. Yeah. It's do you have the, the desire to learn it, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I forgot the question. Go ahead. Well, that's crazy. It's because we were talking about earlier too how in tattooing, it used to be one way where business wasn't really thought about in tattoo yeah. right but yeah. now i'm seeing in social media and everything is uh the more the industry grows the more that people are going into the business like you said now they're creating products now they're creating uh different like that brands. clear plastic we're just talking about yeah that clear <sighs> plastic man that's that's a game changer yeah yeah guys if you I guys seen it on that, not, i got targeted <laughs> on. you hope they don't ban it you said no i said i hope they patent that because if oh, not yeah <laughs> yeah that's so smart man we're talking about a clear plastic instead of using the the like the filmy paper now it's a clear plastic where you could just i'm just i can't wait to just try to put a big piece together and just yeah. match it on the first time like yeah 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 such a genius yeah there's know? a need there and then someone comes up with the idea you know yeah like, can't wait till that um robotic arm is made with tattoo and i just buy a bunch <laughs> of them and i just See, operate them people ask me i've had people dm me like do you think robots will ever take <laughs> over tattooing but i i don't think it'll be a robot i think it'll be some kind of laser projector thing that will project an image perfectly onto the skin but i don't think it'll happen in our lifetime so we're good <laughs> i think there's gonna be a robot where no. it just it comes right for the arm or something and then it's just gonna like laser it on perfectly yeah but it's not gonna create like oh who knows maybe who knows it's i don't know you chad, think it'd be like a line chad, thing. what is it chad gpt chad gtp yeah. oh, i just had a scary conversation with one of my clients this tell week us tell us bro. about chat gt just about ai and how how rapidly stuff can change and how 
it is aware of itself and is afraid of not existing anymore and can what like allocate hell? you know if it's set free it can allocate resources to help itself grow more he's like a computer guy so he yeah, was yeah, telling yeah. me all that i'm like that's scary and there's a new generation like a, a fifth gen chat gpt that they want to release i guess but they don't know how to control it all the way so they won't oh. until there's regulation i was like well, i don't know if that's about- true but Think about it, it. It has a mind of its own. Like it's scared not to exist. Do you think it will like create like something like a virus to fucking kill everyone off? To fucking boom, you know, bam, yep. there it goes end of the world. And if you just <laughs> had that thought, holy then shit, AI has had that yeah. thought. Yeah, because it's thinking thoughts all. Yeah, because the, the simple question would be like, "Well, we just unplug, right?" I mean, but you can't really do that because they're gonna know. Like they're you gonna get the power the from internet. somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You, you just have to. You. Yeah, you'd have to unplug all the internet and all electricity everywhere. Just the uh, fact that it relearns itself, that's the scary yeah. part. And it's what's amazing to me is that everybody's feeding into it. And what are we giving it? What, like, number you know one saying? thing I think people are asking it is to come up with a business idea. So what are we teaching it? That the most important thing to us is business and making money. So what's it going to maybe start doing for itself? Like, couldn't it start a business? Couldn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then now it's hiring oh, people because you can do everything shit. online now. So yeah, like, that's right. And that, that's where like the allocating resources for itself comes into play. If it feels like, hey, I need this to be secure in my existence. Like, what's to stop it from? Doing it's going to analyze well, what what consists of my uh, is existence, and then it's going to try to fucking like, fortify it. You know? Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Have you ever seen that movie with Shia LaBeouf? I think it's called like Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye. Like that? I don't think where I've it's seen like that. this. Yeah, it's like this military yeah. fucking brain. Same thing. Genius. Mm-hmm. But it's taking out people because it's trying to protect itself, supposedly. I I heard that we don't have to go too deep into it, but I heard that uh, <laughs> we could just do a we whole hour on AI. AI. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that there was a uh, AI that was doing something they didn't like. I can't remember what it was. And to get it to stop, they basically they gave it like here's 25 tokens. Every time you do this thing, we don't want you to do. We take a token away. When you're out of tokens, you will cease to exist. And it freaked it out, and it stopped doing the thing. Whoa. Which is like, dude, it doesn't want to not exist. <laughs> so that's a consciousness, right? Like, yeah, that it gets scary real fast. Wait Don't think start. about AI. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until it starts having feelings. Yeah. Bro, yeah. but that's the thing. Everybody is like injecting amounts of information to us so much, yeah. you know, and it's just processing it. And we're deliberately saying like, hey, solve me this problem. And it's a human problem. They're going to be like, well, these fucking people don't know how to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know how to write a children's story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You know, I am going to oh, use shit. that's another thing. I'm using chat GPT, I think, to write a short story <laughs> or a collection of short stories. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. that's an idea. I had the original idea to do it with Fiverr, you know, where you could pay people money to do right. little tasks. Yeah. So I was going to hire like like 12 different people to write a short story uh, all set around like a post-apocalyptic world and then put it together into a book called Short Stories for the Apocalypse. Mm. Um, that's freaky. And everyone was like, you're a piece of shit for yeah. doing that. That's freaky, bro. <laughs> like, I kind of love it though. You're going to write a book that you didn't write? I'm like, hey, you can do it. But you then gotta, someone's like, you can do chat so GPT chat now. GBT, is gotta, a subscription You got to kick them down or what? What's that? You got to kick them down. Chat GPT. Kick them I don't down know. <laughs> chat GPT does it for free. Is it free? <laughs> it's basically yeah. like what we use, but for the, the pictures, but in a different form. Yeah, because we use So we don't have to sign in for it or anything? Or? I was going to say, do you guys use AI for any like art generation or have you tried with We that? tried Mid Journey, you know, Mid-Journey. here and there, but it still has some like, it doesn't really compose a tattoo for you. It no, gives you I like, guess. and they're super detailed. They, they don't really apply. Yeah, they're kind you know of weird saying? too. Yeah, like, like a little has, off. Like, yeah, and yeah. it's just like, so you got to just, it does give you like cool color schemes and everything. But yeah. Yeah. So I heard the more specific you are with it, like you got to say, I want a gladiator in a coliseum in black yeah. and gray looking like this, you know. But it still can't pick up like, like hands. No, you know what I mean? No. It can't pick up hands, <laughs> can't pick up certain features of the face. Yeah. Or it'll give you like a, a breastplate, you know, like some armor, but it's got like three levels yeah like, yeah <laughs> yeah like super bionic you know yeah, it's yeah. Super weird. i did a lion and the lion had like some weird faces you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i got one of them that would look pretty good yeah. that looked relevant you know what i'm saying but yeah. yeah it's still in this working phases but see we're guilty of it too bro yeah, yeah. So, so tell us man let's now that we're talking about the ad, um you know the the uh, technology side yes yeah. talk to us a little bit about um inked in tools inked in tools yeah so uh, we launched about a year ago. Um, again, something that kind of came out of necessity. Uh, my biggest struggle in my business was getting back to clients and, and um, 
and, and replying to them. I would lose messages. I was using a paper planner. Um, I'd write in my planner, you know, uh, John, you know, Eagle, you know, cause I'm doing an Eagle on him. Mm-hmm. Well, and then like I got more complicated and my system would have a parentheses and write text, IG or email. So then when I go to do the tattoo, I'd pull up one of those three and look through, okay, John, well, his name on Instagram is not John. So yeah. now I'm like going through <laughs> yeah. all my DMS trying to find like our reference photos and what we talked about. Um, I was losing appointments, losing people. I wasn't taking deposits. So I'd have no call, no shows. I just had this like gap, this hole in my business. And, uh, me and my business partner were actually meeting about something completely different. We were working on another project and every you know morning that we'd meet together before going to work, you know, we'd sit down and have our meeting and I'd be on my phone and with my planner. And, and he's like, dude, there's like a better way, you know, like, mm. so then we got to talking about how how we could optimize the, you know, how I manage my business as a tattoo artist was something that he had kind of already been working on. And we just slowly developed, took about a year to develop, um, you know, these systems to create something that works for tattoo artists. So now where it's at, it's um, basically, you know, if anyone's familiar with a CRM, you know, it, it's, it's nothing new under the sun. This, yeah. this type of stuff out there, it's been existing for a while. There hasn't been anything really geared towards tattoo artists, or at least at the time that we launched it. Now there's more, there's competitors, which I always think is great. I think it's right now we're such a small team. I couldn't handle every tattoo artist if they all signed up tomorrow. Right. Right. So we're in that like growth stage and we have a steady, you know, flow of, of people signing up that we can keep up with. And that's perfect. Um, but anyway, yeah. It, so it's basically, it creates a client database of all your clients. So you never mm-hmm. lose your clients information. It consolidates all of your conversations, your Instagram, your Facebook, your email, your text all go into one hub. So if I pull up, you know, John Smith, his profile, I'm also going to get a conversation tab that shows all of our conversations we've had. And I can just with a button toggle between Instagram DM or email and send it from one place to him. It looks like he's getting a text or a DM. That's what I was about to ask you. Like if you're able to connect, like from that program, are you able to send a message and it sends it through Instagram? Yep. So do your clients, it just looks like they're having a conversation with you uh, on so whatever platform it wherever is. Wherever they started the source. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Um, and then from there, you know, you, you have a calendar. It's customizable with different time slots. I have mine set up with three different calendars, one for small tattoos, medium tattoos, and then full day sessions. Mm. So a client goes on, kind of reads the description. Okay, it looks like I'm booking a medium tattoo. They click it, select the date and time that they want. They fill out a form with detailed information on what their tattoo is, upload any reference photos, leave a deposit, book the appointment, and then it automates all the confirmation, reminder, and follow-up texts and emails, which are all customizable too. So you can, you know, say, hey, on the day before, send them this text, you know, and two weeks after, send a follow-up email, whatever you want it to be, it's all customizable. Yeah, it's like a virtual assistant right there. It is. It never gets sick and never forgets and, and <laughs> sends exactly what you want all the time, you know? Doesn't complain. Yeah. And, and what I always clarify, it's not for everyone. If you're a busy tattoo artist and you're struggling to keep up with that side of things, if you don't have a system already, then it makes sense. If you already have a system, if you have, you know, a front desk person, or if you don't need it, you know, I'm not trying to like sell something to everybody. Just like, if you need it, it works. So what I want to know is that, does it know that you don't want to cancel it at a certain in the future? You know what I mean? What's What do you mean by that? The AI program. <laughs> <laughs> is it working behind the scenes? So it yeah. knows that you can't cancel it, you know? Yeah. Just be nice to all your tech. <laughs> yeah. Be nice to serve. No, no. Uh, joking aside, like that's, that's awesome, bro. That's exactly. Yeah. We have a square system yep. and we're not using all the, we just realized we have a lot of features, automation features that we're not taking advantage of. Yeah. And, I think it's very important to jump on something like that as a tattoo artist because we're bad at being that um, the follow throughs, yep. you know, of a lot of time we've lost clients because we're assuming they remember their booking that was done two months ago when they were excited. And now life happens yep. and now they forgot about the tattoo, you know. And so we're here like, hey, you see you tomorrow. And they're like, oh, that's yeah. tomorrow. Oh, you know, I got this, this and that. And then. Unfortunately, either they lost the deposit if if you even did a deposit, yep. or they just if you didn't do a deposit, they're just gonna be like, "Sorry, I can't make it." And now, what's what happens? The artist makes less money. Yep. So, 
you know, it's a very awesome tool, man. How much, how much are you guys charging for a subscription? So for an individual artist, it's $99 a month. And then for a shop plan, it's one ninety seven. And for a shop plan, it's for unlimited artists, unlimited calendars. Wow. And then within there, there's, so, you know, you get a business line and the email server that sends out all the emails and stuff. We cover, I think it's up to like 300 texts and emails for the month, anything over the artist gets charged, but it's like 0. 0.001 cent per message. Mm. I just like to be upfront with like all the yeah. charges and stuff. But, um, <clears throat> but I always tell people like, Hey, for a hundred bucks a month, if you're not collecting deposits and now you collect one extra deposit for a hundred bucks, like it pays for itself. If you get one less no call, no show, it pays for itself. If you're going to pay an assistant, like I looked into it, an assistant, that just reads your emails and just books people doesn't do any of the other things is going to charge you at least 150 bucks a month. So mm-hmm. like it, it is a, a cost effect. It is pricey, but it does a lot. We also have a web builder built in web hosting. So you can build a website out in it. Like it probably does more than you even need. So we made sure like, all right, if we're going to have it be this, at this price point, like it better be worth it. You yeah, know? Yeah. And and we're competing against Square, Booksy, all these like Wix, giant companies. Wix. Uh yeah, all of these. But these are like giant yeah. corporations, you know, and we're two people. I don't think a lot of people realize that. It's me and my business partner. So if you are one of our clients and you reach out, it's me or him doing tech support, customer service, sales, texts and calls. Like so I'm constantly on my phone dealing with that stuff oh, yeah. on top of tattooing five days a week. So <clears throat> damn. What I see in this business model that you're doing, this product is something that we we're talking about with mag. Yes, there is big people that are doing this, but mm-hmm. I think the difference with you and the advantage of you is you are a tattoo artist. Yeah. So you think like a tattoo artist so you can relate to tattoo artists and therefore convince them that your uh, product just can be done in other pro and other with other ones, right? With, yeah with uh, companies that are multi-million dollar investments, but the difference is they're so general. They don't care about no. you know, Joe tattoo, you know, yeah. and you know that, and that's where you can get in and be niche. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys watch the office, but like I always tell people, we're the Dunder Mifflin of this game, you know, like we may not be the biggest, we may not have the best price, but we are going to be, you know, more intentional and, and more hands-on, like, especially like, Man, I was so scared to put something out there as a tattoo artist. Like, if I mess up someone's bookings or, and like, I've made mistakes before. We've made mistakes 100% and grown as a business because of it. Like, I'm not perfect, uh, but I do not want to screw anyone over. I don't want to, I don't want someone to rely on this and then it not work. So I was very cautious and I'm always cautious along the way when I'm talking to, to artists. Like, I, I, I want, I want this to be cool for everyone, you know? Yeah. But one thing I've learned is that, especially because we're all over the country, like I knew my little world of tattooing. I knew the shop that I learned in and I knew our business model. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just naively thought like, oh, yeah, that's, that's how everyone does it. There are so many different ways that shops are managed and ran all across the country. So having it be adaptive to where people can customize it to their workflow, you know, helps. But, uh, but there's some shops that, you know, like we'll, we'll talk to them on the phone. Like, I don't think it'd be for you, you know, mm, yeah. which again, like I'm not trying to have every tattoo artist business, you know, I yeah, couldn't. You said <laughs> it, you can't handle everybody's, no. you know, so you just need a certain, I'm pretty sure you guys calculate some numbers, how many, what's your goal so that you guys can be a viable business and make yeah. money and possibly, I mean, tattoo less, right? Isn't that the goal for you? Uh, no, no, what's oh. weird, man. I, I like I've kept the same schedule, the same availability. I probably should like cut a day out a week to just focus on this, but I don't, I love oh, tattooing and I'm, I'm staying at it. It just means that like before I start my day tattooing in between clients and then after I'm always on my phone, always on my iPad, like interacting with people. Mm. So we have to figure something out soon because we are growing and yeah. growing and it's like eventually it's gonna you're gonna have probably to, make a have to hire someone at some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think other like I won't say the name, but there is another company that does something similar, uh, that started a little bit after us. I kind of know a little bit from inside that they definitely have like major money behind them and um they're a big company that have a lot of employees. <laughs> I learned that. To them, we were their number one competitor. Wow. And I was like, if they only knew it was just <laughs> me and the partner. Well, like, I think they know now. They well. know now. <laughs> it's just me. Sorry. Yeah. I think um, 
one that I know was Tattoo Do, and then there's uh, isn't that the one with uh, the guy from uh, Omni? Omni, yeah. Omni? Yeah. yeah. So Tattoo Do, it's from my one. understanding, connects clients to artists, oh. which we're not doing. We don't have a pool like we're not collecting data on your clients or on the artists, right? Uh, we don't have like. Hey, there's all these artists. You're looking for a tattoo. Let's connect you to them. It's mm-hmm. just like you managing your business and just a tool Got to help it. you do that. Whereas tattoo do connects the oh, artist okay. to the client. I think. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure. And that's that's awesome, bro. That's awesome that you're seeing opportunities in the industry and with tech involving tech involved because, again, there's so many business. We're talking behind the scenes, you know, behind the camera that there's so many problems that we see. Oh, I wish they can be this, mm-hmm. and you just found one, and it's yeah. you know. It's also cool that you're aware of all these other businesses. Like, do you ever go on their apps and study yeah. to see what? Uh, yeah, I sign up for the free to, trial and yeah. see what, <laughs> but it helps me learn, you know, and then yeah. it's not like, it's not necessarily to get an advantage or, you know, try to like, it's, it's like, what's as an artist, what's my experience going through their thing? You know, I've, I haven't done it to all of them, but, um, you know, and then, okay, well, what did I enjoy about that? What did I not enjoy about it? How can I apply that to our clients, yeah. our artists that are using yeah. it? That's the same. Yeah. 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 No, it's same, but I think, yeah, the difference that you have is like Ricky said, you're able to build that connection with artists because you already know how, what they're going through. Yeah. Where these big companies are backed up by millions of dollars. They don't, they, they, don't, know. they don't really care. Yeah. They're just trying to make money off of it. Yeah. And I will say one interesting thing, like I've had obviously with, <clears throat> with like my social media and stuff, like I've had backlash from people, mm. but it's always bothered me that you get people that say like, Oh, we don't want corporate people involved in tattooing. We don't want this outside corporation, this big business making money off of tattooing. And then when a tattoo artist creates a product or does something to help the industry or creates an opportunity within the industry, they get kind of trashed on, for taking money from the industry or like, oh, you're just being, and it's like, Bro. you can help the mm-hmm. industry and you can create something and, and be entrepreneurial minded, you know, and, and still be a tattoo artist. And I, I think that I, it just bums me out sometimes. It's like the same people that get so mad about this supply company getting bought out by a corporation or that one being bought out by a corporation are then the first ones to like get mad at a tattoo artist who starts a business. And it's like, yeah. what do you want? Which one do you want? Because you, you know, like you can't have it both ways. Yeah. Right? Those are the keyboard warriors we always hear about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then there's, there's such small percentage, but they're just loud, you know, cause yeah. most people don't care, man. Like no. I, I can care less. Yeah. Like I'll be honest when I first, when you guys, uh, when you messaged us and we were, and we were talking about it with Carlos, Hey, we want, we, this guy wants to come in our, we obviously did our research and we searched your stuff. And my quick judgment on it was like, oh, he has just another CRM tool that can, yeah. that we can use over there. Mm-hmm. But that's, I think everybody just says that at first, you know, it's the people that really care and are thoughtful and they really have a problem, dig deep down more and see, you know, maybe click on your 14 day trial and then they, yeah. they say, wow, this is a solution to my problems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. There's just a disconnect with people just being lazy and not wanting to go in and and before judging somebody, you know, yeah. um, maybe do your due diligence and, and just find out if it's a real thing. Yeah. And I, I think, too, with like like you said, it just being another CRM like it. Yeah, it's a CRM. Like it's like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. However, for a lot of tattoo artists figuring out a CRM, knowing where to start, knowing what to do, like or who to trust or who to trust, like. Yeah, how do you know the person behind the other CRM isn't collecting your client's information or has some ulterior motive there? Yeah. Like, and I guess you have to take my word at it as well, but I'm like, we're more just a way to like help you get into that space. Like if you don't you don't know where to start, start with us, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll help you navigate that world, get your business set up to where you are collecting your client's data. You know, you're, you're giving your clients a more professional experience. So. Do you plan on... Um expanding later on to other businesses or just tattoos no uh, <laughs> like no other artists like like nail artists or lash lash artists you know stuff like that so my wife does lashes and brows and hair i know like every tattoo artist wife out there <laughs> we're a walking cliche <laughs> holy shit but there's so much out there. does it hit home or what 
<laughs> yeah? yeah. Lashes. Lashes. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, I guess we don't like having pensions. Or, you know? <laughs> like, Fuck the yeah, system, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so no, we, we, there's so much out there for those industries already that I don't want to compete against mm. Vigaro. Even though Vigaro's going after tattoo artists as well, like that's fine. But um, yeah, I, I, we, we worked with one permanent makeup artist recently and I don't know that world as well. And there's so many different services they offer. And we worked with her for like two weeks, really trying to like make our system work for her, but it just didn't. And, you know, we ultimately said to her like, Hey, you know what? Like, I, I don't want you to, I don't want to force this. And if it's not a solution for you, uh, I even said to her, like my wife for her business uses Vigaro for her lashes and brows. And I said, that might, that probably will work better for you, you know? So yeah, cool. yeah I'm not trying to go into other industries. I'm not trying to be a big corporation. Like, yeah. You just enjoy what you're doing. I do. I just, yeah. And guys, let's clarify. We use this acronym a lot uh, here right now, just recently. So it's CRM is customer relationship management. I was about yeah. to ask. I was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So let's think about that. Customer relationship management. If you really want to be stand out, your customer service game has to be stepped up. We always talk about it here, right, guys? Yep. Our, our shop is about customer relationships. Yep. And so now you're giving this tool to automate a lot of the stuff so you can just focus on the tattooing. Yep. Bro, it's going to raise up your game. You're going to be able to charge more You're gonna because you're, you're going to be able to make more. So the offset of what you're charging, which is $100 subscription a month, which is, what, 1200 bucks a year? Yeah. And if you sign it's, up for a year, you get, I think it's like nine ninety seven or something like that. Yeah. So you get a couple months off. But. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's super, 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 um, beneficial. I think, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think just keeping in contact with their clients like that, again, going back to the customer service, a lot of clients appreciate that text after like, Oh, how's it doing? Mm -hmm. And you said yeah. it's, it's customizable, right? Yep. How, how's, how's the tattoo doing? Um, a, yeah. a how was the service? Was it, you know, good for you. If so, you know, can you leave us a review or help us out kind of yeah. things like that, you know? So this this integrates also with like your Google business page. Uh -huh. And so on your follow-up message, you can it'll have a link and you can like it's it's so customizable, it's almost too much to where like <laughs> some people overcomplicate yeah. it, but like you can include a link to your Google business page. <laughs> and I'm then, laughing because we just did that with our square. We didn't know about the automation yeah. part. Yeah. We're like getting a lot of reviews, good reviews on our square um system. Yeah. But that does nothing for us. It's not exposed. So then this guy's like, bro, we can connect it. I'm like, well, fucking do it. Can yeah. it go back a, a year so we can get all those reviews? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so. Google Business is, I think, the new... I, I think Yelp is dead. Uh, just Your personal, opinion? Yeah, just opinion. I think Yelp is... I don't know. Do you use Yelp anymore? Or when we, you want to yeah. go eat somewhere, do you Google... For food. For food. Yelp, for food. you do? Just I, uh, to see the pictures. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing for me. Like they have good pictures, but I don't really go on Yelp to get the best of. Yeah. yeah. So, so it I, is a dying thing. I definitely think Google's the the way of the future. What do yeah. you use for as, as far as like to compare a uh, restaurant or? I just Google everything. Google, Google everything. Yeah. Like I just I don't even keep like I actually made a reel about this and people were like making fun of me like just save save the phone number of the restaurant in your phone. It's like, I'll Google my local pizza shop every time I want to order pizza. Yeah, same oh, same, same thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm, going maps. I'm normal. Yeah. I go on maps. You know what I'm saying? And I person just, on the and internet I who made that. fun of me. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 want, you want a couple minutes to talk yeah. to me? Yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of mean DMs, man. Do you? Let, uh, let's, let's talk about that. TikTok's you know? the worst. I was just talking about, I think yesterday I went live on TikTok, right? Oh, you uh, told me about this. Yeah, thing. dude, it's just fucking. They're the hating on you? Comments are horrible on there. They're yeah. like, oh, ruining another skin. It's like this Christian lady. I was like, Ooh, the Christians. Out of you. <laughs> Ooh, the Christians. <laughs> dude, I'm a Christian, yeah. right? And, uh, <laughs> Speak about it. But there's this breed of them that literally, like, I've gotten messages like, you are killing people by tattooing them. And it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it's they're they're out there, man. They're a special breed. Like yeah. they will attack you. So you too, you get um, hateful messages on on social media. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm because I make those reels. Uh, a lot of it's like reaction videos or commentary on reels, mm -hmm. Instagram reels. I don't do TikTok, uh, although everyone says I should. Um, but yeah, and and so a lot of times I'm like reacting to a video of like a tattoo or someone you know, tattooing without gloves. Sometimes I'm making fun of that. And so I get 
a lot of mean comments mm. back. I'm I, I always say like I am just trying to be funny. I'm yeah. just trying to make people laugh on the internet in the world of tattooing. None of it's that serious, but some people get really mad. See, and it, I think it's a tattoo community that's laughing with you. <laughs> yeah, because we know yeah, we cross know. contamination. You know, you don't want to yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah, and I never try like. Again, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm learning. I'm just a human. I try not to make fun of someone who's like legitimately trying to do a tattoo. Like I'm not going to make someone fun of someone's artwork unless it's like really, really bad. <laughs> like, and they deserve it. Yeah. Like, uh, you're tattooing out of a garage yeah. with no gloves and you, you just, you know, d- damaging someone's skin. Like, oh yeah, I'll, I feel comfortable saying something about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you're just another tattoo artist, I'm not going to like trash your work, you know? Yeah. Uh, but putting judgment out there in any form does invite judgment back. My wife warned me about that. And I, was like, well, oh. I think now, especially now over the years, like everybody's so sensitive. Now you kind of have to tiptoe what you say. Yeah. And that's the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, some messages have come to mind where like, I didn't even think of that angle, but apparently I'm a really bad person <laughs> for making a joke on the internet. <laughs> I always trip on on like in social media in general, right? If, if you put it out there, you're allowing yourself to be judged. For so sure. why are you tripping? You yeah, know what I'm saying? That, that goes for me too. That's why I take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. I usually will reply something funny and then let it go. Like, yeah, you can, you can hate me. I don't yeah. care. That's fine. Yeah, you're never going to see these people. <laughs> What's that? You're never going to see them in person, you know? No. Uh, Unless no. it's tattoo. Yes. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Remember that comment? <laughs> <laughs> the day that happens, yeah. I'll, I'll delete Instagram. Yeah. The day yeah, someone know, right? yeah, actually shows up and gets tattooed. And it's, hey, remember me? <laughs> <laughs> user I'm, I'm user 54321. <laughs> <laughs> you called me out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, like I said, you have to develop a thick skin when you're out there doing a lot of like content on you. You know, talk about the one that went viral. We're just talking behind the scenes, dude. How many oh, yeah. views did you get? So that one, I think it was at 6.9 or 7 million views now. I can feel that video. <laughs> like, that's a painful spot. And obviously, dude pushed through and wanted to finish that tattoo. Like, all tattoos hurt, but there comes a point when your body just tells you I'm done. <laughs> and most people can't push past that p- spot. I can't. I mean, it's, you get to a point, it's like, nope, nope. I'm getting off the table and running away. <laughs> uh, this guy obviously pushed right past that point. And I've seen people do this at like conventions and uh, get to that point and you just watch. I, I can't believe it. They've been getting tattooed the whole day and their body is literally shaking and they just keep going. Um, good for you. Stronger than I am. So before you talk about that, what you we were talking about um how did you you gain like such attention so quick, right? What was yeah. happening? Yeah. So I mean it, it started slow and, and this is I think for anyone that is wanting to get into making reels, mm-hmm. you have to be consistent and you have to just keep plugging along because mm-hmm. like we said earlier, you don't know which one is gonna go viral and then start that snowball. So I started with like four or three thousand followers and I'm at like fifty now. 51 i think i just hit um and that's all happened within probably the last six to eight months less than a year um and it's all from reels like what's consistent so for me i just i try to do or at least in the beginning was trying to do every single day and i would do it at the same time in the morning like working out in the garage and have a little time and i just I looked at it as like I'd scroll through reels and find something tattoo related. Mm -hmm. If I had a funny angle on it, I'd record like a reaction video or I think Mm -hmm. the kids call them a stitch. Uh, You you pop up and uh, (laughs) say something and then it just kind of grew from there. But um, yeah, the first one was a lady who was cross contaminating. She it was or I don't know if it was a lady or not, but it was three girls. They all had matching tattoos and they're all fresh. And the person wiped (laughs) each one with uh, the same paper towel. I think I made a joke about like it's the tattoo version of uh, version of human centipede or something. Like that. <laughs> and so it, it was just like that simple. Like this is something gross. I'm going to have a funny take on it. And then it just kind of and then one of them went viral. And it freaked me out because like I said, it was like, oh, there's 2000 views in like a second. Oh, in a crap. second. That's how fast that it was like immediate. I was like, oh, this is going to go viral. And that it's like oh. it was this one, right? That wasn't the first oh, one. That yeah, oh, okay. that's the most recent one, and that's the one with the most views. Which is million? weird to me because, like, 
I don't have that funny of a take on it. I can, it's not that great of a video, but I yeah. think the initial, you know, the, the guy, chills I think the people shock. could uh, connect with it. Yeah. You know what I mean, and people have an opinion on it. Yeah. You put something out there that offers or like throws a maybe controversial subject and you get people commenting Engaging back and forth. And Dude, you have 4,000 comments. Have you read all of them? Mostly, yeah. yeah. And I will say like, I answer every single DM I get. Like, oh, wow. It's it could be so interesting. Like, hey, I like your videos. Like, I always read and reply. That's cool. But I don't get a lot, so it's not. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to say. No, but like. that's the whole basics of social media, right? It's a social discussion. So yeah. if you're gonna put out there something and it goes viral and you just don't even respond to it anymore, then you're essentially not taking advantage of that growth that you could have. Yeah, I will say I've had some where the the comments get really ugly. Yeah, you know yeah, I've you had like just swipe up. Yeah, well there was one where people got racist and uh i had to like delete those comments yeah. that was weird yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i don't like that yeah those suck well, yeah. i think the new algorithm now that it just upgraded to um they want people to comment so like if uh for you to reply to comments oh yeah yeah they want you to reply and to like their comments to continue that conversation going mm-hmm. what yeah. does your genius software engineer say about all that we want to know i'm pretty sure it's elon musk or something because <laughs> <laughs> you said he just made the app in like a week bro oh that's just a buddy of mine that's not even my is my he part. yeah he's is he social uh, social media savvy as far as that or no 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 he's a software engineer he worked at in and out for a long time and now i don't know where he works good. At another company <laughs> and I, I was like how much software does in and out need? It's like the menu hasn't changed in a hundred years. You know? <laughs> what do you do there? I guess there's a lot of code behind the scenes of like um, temperatures and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't understand. It. But uh, what, do you have any insight on the algorithm? Cause I, Oh, I have no idea. No. Yeah. I, I, I'm tired of looking at algorithms. I just like, fuck it. I'll post when I want. And if I stop for a while, I just do. And the hell with it. Yeah. yeah I, I think I have my most, my, some of my biggest periods of growth have been when I don't post anything for a little bit. Yeah. And then I also, I post at like six, seven in the morning when I'm working out. Everyone says like, that's not an ideal time right. to post. Okay. Well, it, uh, it how do you works. explain 7 million views? <laughs> 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 yeah. So as far as the uh, consistency about uh, the videos, is it being consistent with a certain topic or were you always doing different videos, but at least it was one a day? I think uh, I heard there's a formula where like 10% of your content should be new or like experimental. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't follow that to a T, but I do throw in some random ones every once in a while. But like, hey, this isn't tattoo related, but I think I'm funny and here's my take on this. Okay. And those don't do as well. Uh some of them do okay. I don't know. I, I just I just try to have fun. So being that's it. That's but consistent cool. with the amount of time posting. But then like I don't know if that's true either. Cause like I said, I just I'm on a long break right now where right. I haven't posted anything and it's still growing. So Okay. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> you don't ever get stressed out about like so now that you have all this like I guess clout and like views. Do you ever get stressed out? Like, man, my next video better be a hit. Or do you ever go through that? A little. Yeah. And I, when I try, that? when I try harder, I don't think it does as well. Mm-hmm. I really have to just stay true to like, what mean? do I think is funny? And if I don't have anything funny to say, then I, I try not to put out a video. You know? <laughs> like me and him, we sit, yeah. we sit over here. But we right? have so many, and we're like, this should be a TikTok, yeah. but we never fucking do them, dude. We <laughs> I think one time you guys did it. We did, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, oh, the with music. the control, with the music, yeah. with the music. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, which music you want to play? You ever, you ever had that? Yeah, you ever have that in your <sighs> shop where they're yeah. like, you ask a client, hey, what do you want to listen to? Like, and everybody's oh, like, oh. oh, we never let the client. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> We're nice like that. We do five stars. <laughs> Iconic. Let us know. Yeah, yeah. No, Bring your we, playlist. It was, yeah. Dude, we want to do it. We always talk about it because you have a you have the packer and you have the critical battery, right? Yeah, yeah. You know when you're changing uh, voltage? Uh, well, the other beep. day he was changing voltage. Deet, deet, deet. So I went in there. I'm like, deet, 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 deet. and I'm like, and dude, we I should. Up, I one upped him. He one upped me, and I was like, oh fucker. So I went, deet, deet. and I'm like, we should do a TikTok where like we're like code, we're talking in code, you know? <laughs> talking about the client and Morse code. Yeah, yeah Morse code. Like yeah, this. This client's this client fucking moving a lot, bro. I want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we need to nail that one, bro. That's so you, you can try it too, bro. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we always talk about those. But the thing is, we never execute them. We're just like, oh, that would be execution. a good TikTok, you know? Yeah. I guess you just start writing these down. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Them on, on that's the, the thing, you know? They take a lot of work, you know, just to yeah. set up, record, and then who edits it. And then that's what holds a lot of people back, that extra work. That's why I do low effort. Yeah. Just me <laughs> replying to a video. Half the time I'm in my sweater, like in my garage or no shirt on, just like 
And it's yeah. just like my hot take on a video. And it comes off just like yeah, natural, like naturally ready. And I think that's what people are willing to yeah. watch now that everybody's tired of seeing the perfect setup, lighting and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like now, then there's the other side where like, I think Elvis was telling us like, he spent like two hours fucking making this one reel, yeah. and it didn't really get that many hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. It's kind I do of like, like the high production ones that that John mm-hmm. guy we were talking about earlier. He's got a podcast mm-hmm. now. You know, they I think they're in Florida and they do like Florida. They're putting exactly. like effort into them. You know, mm-hmm. like you can tell they're like maybe scripting it out, and you know they have people coming in and acting and stuff. Like I, those are entertaining to me. Beautiful. I love all the like Instagram real tattoo people out there like i yeah. you know it's like yeah. so like let's analyze this so when, when we go on scroll on tiktok or instagram reels right like what percentage of them really catch your attention you know when i look i'm like there's few only you know what i mean like well, it yeah. depends if i'm on the toilet <laughs> you got a lot of patience yeah, there? I got a lot of patience. Yeah, like, we know already <laughs> 30 minutes okay. oh i have an idea speaking of that have you ever been on the toilet and you're on reels right and then you have to stop, right? You have to set your phone down to do yeah. something. I won't be graphic. <laughs> uh, and then, like, you, it's on a reel, just on loop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always wonder, like, does that make the views on that video go, like, through the That's roof? True, huh? So I'm going to post one and be like, this is an experiment. Whatever you're doing right now, just set your phone down. Go get that drink. Go do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. And just let my video play over and over again, and we'll see if it, like, blows up. Right? Yeah, because you can trick the system. They don't know exactly what you're doing, right? You're out there yeah. wiping your ass and shit. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting <laughs> replay. <laughs> so and then we walk past by, and it's a girl going, like, or something. <laughs> what the fuck is going on in there? <laughs> Or it starts getting annoying, so you just go like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all do it. Yeah. We all do it. Yeah. I, I was the only one. <laughs> so I want to try to be that video. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm just there's so much content out there. I'm like, I'm always asking, what is it gonna, what is it gonna amaze me the next what time? You know, because some of them, I really swipe over the ones that are like perfectly made, the perfect lighting. Right now, I see a lot of how tos on mine. Yeah. How to videos, like how to record. Um. um like take a picture of somebody with the background or, you know, how I like those. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. All the know? Procreate tips and stuff. Yeah, all the I Procreate like tips. Ones. I've been seeing how-tos and also like um, kind of how you, you do your videos, reactions yeah. to other people's. Yeah, there's a lot of people doing that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was the first. No, I'm not. <laughs> just kidding. Stop no. it. <laughs> what about you? What do you find yourself getting entertained? Uh you still no, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, besides that, bro, I'm just I think they're cracking down on that. <laughs> it's a lot of tattoo stuff. Yeah, a lot of tattoo stuff. Do you guys still stop and watch a person tattoo a line, or nah? Sometimes. Yeah. If I want to yeah. be frustrated. <laughs> Damn, that looks perfect. <laughs> like, who the fucker? How the fuck? How does it not splatter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are they doing right? <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy, man. You ever think it's going to go back to just pictures, though? Because sometimes, honestly, I'm not going to lie. When I'm trying to go to someone's work, and I'm just trying to see how they did this, I just want to see the final product. Yes, I don't want to see the, the whole the video before. and everything. I um, want to see the final product? Yeah, yeah like, nah, I want to analyze I, it, but I don't want to. And then, you know, and then the video stops, and it goes again. It's like, fuck, now I have to go through bro, the whole video again. So <laughs> many times I'm, I'm showing your work, like, uh, people coming in, like, oh, yeah. he does cover-ups, whatever. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, this isn't a good one. And it's like the whole. And it's the whole thing. So you have to wait. Like, just hold on. Yeah. Like, it's, it's yeah. Hold on. Let's get show. Like, Ricky, get the fuck out of the picture and just show the person. Uh, uh, at least, at least have a little thing to scroll all the way to the end. You know, Instagram <laughs> needs that because yeah. uh, TikTok does that. Yeah. yeah. Dude. What about oh. this frustration though? You don't have TikTok, huh? No. So you can't relate to this one. Stay out of this one, bro. <laughs> 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 no, because on TikTok you can pause it. Yes. Yeah. And then on Instagram you, can. you have to hold it, right? Yeah. You so do you ever get confused? Now. Shit, I didn't even know you could hold it, bro. Yeah, you can hold it. And then, like, you want to catch it. You have to time it right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because on Instagram, right, you can do that. You have to yeah. time it. And sometimes you want to see the tattoo because they put it right away. And you're, mm-hmm. like, trying to hold it. And now you have to watch it all over <laughs> again. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but I do the struggles. Think, I think pictures are coming back because I've seen an option where you can put music over your photos. Yeah. Nice. And you just like. Yo, what about channels? Channels has just came up. I just added three channels without knowing. <laughs> Yeah, I just got offered, like, it just popped up my Instagram. Yeah. I create a broadcast yeah. channel. Broadcast. It seems like a group chat. But no one can reply. But no one can reply. Yeah. So it's so. more like your your page, like back in Facebook. Remember in Facebook, you can just 
upload stuff. Yeah. But they could reply there, huh? No, they yeah, could only, yeah. They can't. They can, like, there's like a newsletter, probably. Yeah. I feel left out because I haven't got asked to do it. Because <laughs> you're TikTok famous. We're not Instagram famous. <laughs> yeah, so I'm still figuring it out because yeah. I've seen a couple artists. iMonster did it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, guys, I'm trying this new thing. I'm going to post new give things here. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. So I started. I posted one up. And I'm like waiting for somebody to react. It just says scene. Scene. Yeah. Scene or hearts. But, yeah. but nobody gives. No one can reply. Yeah. No one can. Yeah, and, and people were DMing me like, because I posted some merch ideas. I'm doing a ripoff on like Kirkland and Costco. For okay. My, yeah. It's gonna be, All right. It's going to be dropping soon. Doing, we'll have a pre-sale. <laughs> uh, I haven't done any merch yet. So I'm like, all right, let's make some merch. But I got a lot of DMs like, people can't reply in the chat. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <That was laughs> or, and then one person's like, it kind of looks a little like the Kirkland logo. I was like... Bingo. Bingo. You got Ta-da. it. <laughs> Smart guy. It reminds so me what's of the whole point of it? Though? I don't know. It reminds me of just I don't the know. notes. Like just, I think it's more like um, your like inner, a- your closer people that really want to know. So like, let's say you make a channel for all your collectors uh-huh. and you can say, hey, collectors, I have this uh, this date available. Or you want to give out a tattoo to the, the people that actually got tattooed from you. You would offer that there and uh, the, not the other view. So you become more exclusive. Right. But they I can't think. comment. But they get those perks. Yeah. But then no, they could just but they can DM you. Yeah, they can. Be like, hey, man, I saw on the on your channel that you're giving away, you know, a half day because I got tattooed last month. Yeah. So it's kind of more. I think it's more of because I named mine exclusive content. It might be for the people who really like mess with you. But you know, because they did the initiative to join it. Yeah. Can you select who goes on there or not? Can you like choose? I don't. I haven't got no. I don't think no. so. So, so you can't really create like a private group like Facebook. No, because no. no. that would be dope. Like, well, maybe was, like, you can go group. in there and just remove some or something. You know, just say, hey, you. I never tattooed you, fool. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> <laughs> like if you create a, like this would be a perfect idea. Like I was talking to you about it. Like I want to create a group. Like I wish you could do it on Instagram, but on Facebook, like where everyone that you tattooed, like our collectors, and just have it in there so they could all talk to each other. Ooh, that'd be cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it just basically what we're trying to do in person. Yeah. Have it online, and now they're part of a community, mm-hmm. our they're, community. That's yeah, and 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 make it more exclusive. Exactly. Um, who's the artist that just started something like that? But it's more like a subscription for business related. Um, Adrian. No, I just told the you one about from him. Washington? Ross Abbott, you know who Ross Abbett oh, is? Oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's very, doing a lot of stuff. For he's that, doing yeah. a lot of stuff. So now he has this new one called the Tattoo. Um, fuck! I forgot the name. Sorry, man. Uh, it's a it's a website where it's community based. So you sign up, right? I think it's like forty nine dollars a month, and basically you're in a community of of like minded people. Um, and you share ideas, and he goes in there, and and they say, so if you have a question, like, you know, now I have a private studio, mm-hmm. you know, I want to up my game and charge this much. What can I do? Right. Now you have, you know. 500 heads in there that it can give you advice based on their so it's advice. Like a that's cool. mastermind kind of thing. Like a mastermind, yeah. That's great. That's yeah. pretty smart, right? I, I see, I love stuff like that too. Like, I think the industry, I know some people don't even like if you call it an industry. Um, oh, <laughs> there's so it's much a, stuff. It's, like, fucking business. it's so hard to keep. It's like, uh, we're we're running an ad, and my client or my partner was like, "Should it say tattooers or tattoo artists at the top?" And I was like, "Bro, you, how much time do you got? Because that that alone is a can of worms that yeah. will piss someone off." You know, what did ChatGPT say? <laughs> we didn't <laughs> ask. <laughs> ass, bro. There you go. I was bro. like, just call them tatters and tatters. Be done with it. Um, but yeah, the it, it needs the industry needs more of that stuff. You know, I I think why not? You know. Like we had said earlier, our, our, the clients expect us to be professional. Yes, you know, so yeah. why not be professional? Why not offer them that experience? Let's know? let's go deep dive into that right now. That's a good thing. Why do you think mm-hmm. our clients want us to be professional and not? Um, because before we used to allow alcohol while we were drinking, while we we're tattooing here, you yeah. know, a while back. But then some situations happen, and we just say, you know what? Let's eliminate that. And my thinking was like, at first, I was like hesitant to tell my clients, like. Hey, you can't drink anymore here. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, bro. You can't bring your cooler. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then I said, fuck that. They're not going to drink in their profession. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Why, sh- why should they come and drink in our profession? Can't bring a case of beer to the dentist. Exactly. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> that would be different. That would be a cool dentist. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so we ask, we got to ask ourselves, why do clients want to be more professional now? It's because, you, you said it earlier, the competition level is, um, there's so many tattoo shops all around yeah so you have to be like competitive as far as that right yeah 
yeah, you have to treat your clients really well. Like the days of being one shop per town are done, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so you can't treat people poorly and, and not just that you have to go above and beyond. And they're already used to a, a high level of customer service in every other industry they go to. Yeah. Uh, and even with the like booking online to yeah. kind of, you know, take it back to Inkton tools a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people are always like, Oh, my clients, they're not going to be able to book online. It's like, they're already doing their appointments online for everything else. Their barber, their dentist, their chiropractor mm-hmm. is all doing it online. They're ready. They're the ready. clients are ready for a professional experience. We kind of need to catch up and give it to them. And you would expect those, especially in this industry where it's something so permanent, you know I mean? They, they expect that level of quality. Uh, yeah. Because they're paying that much for something like that. Yeah. Prime example. Where'd you go before? The, where'd you go before you came here? Look at the cup. I, I normally don't, but I was. I had, to, it's empty. I had to drive through. It's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just been empty this whole time. He's like, I normally don't go there. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. But let's talk about it. You went there. You got yeah. a coffee. How was your experience? Exact same. It's always been every time I've gone there. It's consistent and fine. And they treat you like you're a valued customer and they yeah. say, hello, how are you? Everything. Boom. Yeah. So imagine a client goes to get their Starbucks, right? Before you go in and get tattooed. And then they come into a tattoo shop and they don't even say hello to them in the first yeah. five seconds. They just experience high level of corporate customer service. And now they're walking into a shop where they're going to pay, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars. They expect that same thing. Yep. This goes all around. So that's how we got to think about ourselves like that, you know? And, and guess what? As artists, you can hate it all you want but it's not going to change the fact that that's what clients want. So you can fight it and probably be left behind a little bit, or you can embrace it. And it's cool to be nice to your clients, man. Like yeah. just being a fucking a nice, like you said, nice person goes a long way. I think people, we do it naturally though. We know whether it's the, the old thought or the, or the new thinking, we all do it without knowing. We just, they don't want to label it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. all genuinely got to, Understand, if I'm nice to this guy, he'll be nice to be back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Especially entering a tattoo shop, everyone's intimidated. Because yeah, it's you the know, most you intimidating thing ever. Yeah. It is. It's a scary thing. Yeah. I always want, through. I'm always trying to figure out how to break that. That's been my thing. Like, because I sit there, um, Romeo sits there. He's the first one. He's cool. He welcomes everybody. And I'm like, how can we break that? I think we should have balloon animals in the front. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I got hey, you. I'll, I'll, I'll be here every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for tips. You know what I mean? Every Saturday. No, I'm serious. Like, how do you break that? How do you break that stigma? Yeah, I think when when I was in my shop, it was you know as simple as like saying hello when people walk through the door. Yeah. Like that, you'd be surprised. My big takeaway from conventions was that too. It's with fresh eyes, going to my first convention and realizing that. Half of the people sitting there that weren't tattooing the whole weekend never looked up from their table, never greeted a person oh, walking man. by. And I remember just going like, what? Why aren't they doing that? What's going What's? It can't be that simple. And it is like yeah. if you sit at a convention and you're not tattooing that weekend and you look at every person walk by. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Hey, do you have any mm-hmm. questions? Welcome. Hey, check out my stuff. You will get booked. You will do tattoos. That Talk weekend. about it. Talk about it. Because I know you guys just went over there. Let's, <laughs> so, let's do my apprenticeship. It. You know, um, these guys paid for my trip to go to Philly and they're like, you're here to work. All right. So you're going to stand in the front of the booth and you're going to greet everybody. Yeah. It was tiring as heck, but it's true because I got a chance to walk around and not everyone had a greeter. You know, and if they did, it's probably like a hot girl or something. But yeah. it was just not. I told him to put on a nice little tank top. You know? <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Rock a Philly shirt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nice and tight. Cold as hell in Philly. Nipples hard as hell. Yeah, it's a shirt. <laughs> no, but it, it did work, dude. Because uh, uh, we wrote in a couple of people, you know, just by me saying what's up. What about- he even got to tattoo during his apprenticeship yeah. there. That's you know cool. I mean? That's dope. What about this little mini art show convention? Did you guys feel that? Did, did he nah. explain exactly what you were <laughs> None of them were like that. Nah, no, right? Everybody was like... Maybe it's because of the culture and that's how it was. Because yeah. that's yeah. the point. It still hasn't changed. Mm. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even if we go to Golden State or we're doing Incon, shout out to Incon, shout out to uh, Trusted Tattoo. We, we had them here and they invited us there and we're going to have some booths there. Um, you're going to still see that you walk through all those booths you're gonna see people just hunker down and then just yeah a possible three four hundred dollar tattoos just passing by and you're just like I'm trying to get this line right so I can show it later. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And if you think that person who maybe doesn't have a ton of experience getting tattooed is 
they're going to be the one to break the ice and they're going to walk up to you while you're drawing and go, Hey, excuse me. Uh, can I talk to you? No, they're no. going to wait for the person that is eyes up, smiling, yes, waiting. Exactly. Yeah. It is cornball, but like, Hey, it's business too. Like a little, it's just like simple acknowledgement. acknowledgement, just like looking at them and just saying, Hey, how's it going? That, Cause that even me, way. I was in, I was in Timothy. He asked me, did you get a chance to talk to um, one of the artists that I really liked? Michael. Like, Michael. And I was just like, Nah, but what why? was your thinking? It's because I was intimidated and I didn't want to. Um, I just wanted to be respectful and I didn't want to interrupt him while he was tattooing. So mm -hmm. I will say one thing I got from my mentor, Dan McNabb at, from Rinse Cup, because I did a lot of conventions with him when I was apprenticing. Okay. He taught me and would act like when he walked into a convention, like, first of all, half the people that worked there thought he worked for the convention because he would just like, what do you need? Uh, do you, do you got, want me to grab tables? Let's get you help set up. Like he's checking in artists and stuff. Like just had that kind of command presence going into it. And also like no fear going up to any artist. Like literally, I think one time it was Nico Hurtado, you know, like arguably probably outside the tattoo world, one of the most well-known tattoo artists. Yes. He would just walk up to him in his booth, go back there while he's tattooing. Hey, what you working on? Oh, that's cool. You know, like <laughs> no fear. And, and you'd be surprised even the biggest you know, baddest tattoo artist, most famous person out there inside is probably intimidated as well. And are kind of maybe yes. hiding behind the yes. booth being protected. So you like, and I had apprentices at the last convention I did come up and talk to me when I was an apprentice, I would do it like go up to people now be respectful about it. Right. Don't go like, mm -mm. You know, like, like hey, what's a, up, man? There's what's a what's fine up, line, you know, but don't be afraid <laughs> to like Ricky. walk up and yeah. hey, how's it going, man? What, what are you working Alex, on? By default, though, think about it. The conventions are designed for not to be bothered like that. Think about it, because one of the things I thought about is like, fucking take out those tables. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Put some bar stools or something where people can walk in a little closer. You know, or maybe put a line here that says, hey, you know beyond here or whatever, you know, because yeah. yeah. people are going to come with their fucking alcohol. I don't get it. Why at conventions can we drink banana tattoo shots? That's another point. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because conventions but are magic. By default, <laughs> it gives, it, 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 uh, it's set up so that you don't have that interaction. And that yeah. bugs me. I was watching your guys. But I think you can't really have that, that connect, that interaction, like you're saying, unless you have more than one booth, because you can only do so much in a 10 by 10 booth. So what uh, this is, a little convention hack. I stole yeah. it from Dan and, and I do it now when I go to conventions. We take those front tables that yeah. they come with and we throw them to the side. Yeah. And I'll put it my massage table mm -hmm. up front where that table is. Oh. I put my client there. So I'm tattooing and literally Bro. people walk right up. I mean, it's so simple. It's little things like that that yeah. you, you take a fresh perspective to. You'll stand out in the convention. Pooch did know? that. Shout out to Pooch. He was one of the first that I saw did that. You know, you know Pooch tattoos. Yeah. He he did an elaborate setup, and then he did like a, a a booth where it's more open like that. Yeah. And then he had those bar tables. And he had those bar tables. So my thinking <clears throat> is like, do you really have to have all your pictures there? You know what I'm saying? Like, no. It doesn't matter. Like maybe have a maybe a small little catalog or something or an iPad there, right? But also, too, the mindset is wrong. If you're going to go to a booth and if you're going to go and tattoo um, and you don't want to be bothered because you want to finish it, then you just by default just um, lost the opportunity to say hi to people. That's what yeah. you're there for. Yep. I mean, most of the time. Well, I think, see, to counter that, I feel like there's two reasons why you're there to network and you're there to either compete. Uh, compete. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the people that are competing are the ones that are, have the headphones on and they have to finish between oh, okay. that time because yeah. it sucks that some of those competitions are like midday. So now you only have like a certain amount of hours to finish a piece. Yeah. So I get that. Two I get that. Uh, so, so yeah, you got to decide you want to compete or you want to go say network. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And especially in a high traffic area, like I've never been to a convention with like them said, but Philly, apparently Philly is just. But, I'd you know, love to go to Philly. Have you, you done could it? Make, no. You could make a killing there because people Vegas. are there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They're yeah. there willing to do it. So you just expose that. Move the fucking table. You know? The get your are, tattoo artist up there so you can see. You know? Yeah. And that's, I think that's one of the ways. Like Philly, is, there's about 1,200 artists right there. Damn. And it's like nothing but walking people. That's yeah. cool. It's just walking people mm -hmm. looking for art. So how do you stand out? Yeah. That's the hard part. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> like, That's yeah. all it Start is. There. Yeah, yeah. And maybe even too, like if the massage table's not up front, maybe it's off to one side and then you put a table on the other side to display so people can walk in. Mm, yeah. You know, I know you don't want to be disturbed, but like just little things. Try it, try it out. Yeah. Experiment. And some people argue, well, I don't want to be disturbed. There's people 
drink and they might bump me or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, put a some little barrier at yeah. least, you know what I'm saying? But the whole six foot table is like, you know, you're leaning like this, like yeah. trying to and they're peek. way back in the back. Yeah. They were the way in the back, and you're like, yeah. Well, what am I seeing? Yeah. A fucking uh, a wallpaper, mm-hmm. you know? I got so, I got one gripe about conventions too with the contests, because I've uh I've judged one last year at Seaside. I'm gonna do it again this year. Oh nice. Um I don't know why. I know this is like there's a long history of tattoo conventions and the way things have been done, mm-hmm. but I do not understand why other than best of day or whatever, why tattoos that were done 10 years ago, five years ago in another state, whatever are allowed to enter. It should, in my opinion, if you wanted to revolutionize the tattoo convention and like most artists I talk to agree, make it so you can only enter into categories for tattoos that were done at the convention that day. Yes. Why is it not that way? I'd never made sense to me. And someone will tell me I'm wrong. No, <laughs> I, I hear you on that. You know oh, yeah. why? Because that's the per everybody has a clean slate there. Yeah. Everybody has a time pressure. It's Ink Master. Yeah. It's Ink Master at a large scale. Yeah. Everybody has the time scale, you know, the time duration, whatever. They have the pressures of if did they bring the right stuff. Obviously, if you go prepared, you're gonna win. Yeah. And if you're badass, you're gonna be winning. You know, that evens it out. But of course, it's hard to it's hard to judge when somebody brings a back piece that did 200 hours on it. And then the other back piece has a hundred hours. Who's right. going to win. And you have one that someone tried to do that day. Yeah. And you know, you're not supposed to know, but you know, the artist that did the, the masterful back piece and you know, they're like an icon yeah. in the industry. And you're like, well, I, I kind of have to give this, this one to this person based on who it is. Yeah. It's like, I mean, maybe there should be a category that's separate for, Under you know, three years or something. Yeah. Everyone, any tattoo can be entered, but I think the majority of them should be done that day. There it's it is, bro. Fair Incon, enough. you guys heard a little tip, you know what I mean? But yeah. there, I saw the, the agenda, you know, and they're doing like prior, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I guess it, I guess whoever controls it gets to set up what they want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a valid reason for it. Yeah. I'm open. I'm always open to being wrong. Mm-hmm. Like. I love being You know wrong. what we want to do here, Alex? We want to do a little competition that I saw on the East Coast being done. And it was like a mini convention and a mini shop. Like, why aren't we competing against our, ourselves as artists? With our neighbor shops. With our neighbors. That's a great idea. You know what I'm saying? And have a little friendly competition. Yeah. And, you know, bragging rights that I won that last one. It's fine. Share it's techniques just, while you're here. You, you know, have just, a little trophy. Yeah. we want to <laughs> What they do over there, in short, is that they, they get like 12 to 15 artists, local, uh-huh. whatever. And they all have their client, right? And whether the client pays the three, four hundred bucks entry fee for a full day just to enter, you know, enough so that that pot can can give it to a winner and a machine like they were giving out a Bishop one. That's rad. Right. And then you have music and everybody's chilling and you're seeing 12 tattoos. And the best thing is it's not just tattoo, whatever the hell you want. It's here's the theme. Here's the you must incorporate this picture. Yeah. And then you just do like 12 different versions of it. You know what I'm saying? That's a great idea. Bro. I love that. Yeah, that's that's imagine, like, the, you guys do one invite. That's all right. You're, you're <laughs> that's sad, the bro. learning. Like imagine learning from this guy, this guy, this guy, everybody, you could give them all the same roles, but everybody's going to do it different. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You, you might be do a traditional it. three round liner. Someone does a, you know, black and gray, but they incorporated their own style to it. And then yeah. you get to judge and you get three. You want to be a judge? You know, <laughs> sure. or you want a tattoo, <laughs> but then yeah, you'd have to, and they, and they get three judges that, um, you know, they're to be not biased, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I love that, man. I'm in. It's the ultimate <laughs> thing you want. I want to compete against somebody, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And if you don't want to compete, that's fine. I only need 12. And if you're self-conscious of not tattoo now competing, then that's fine. That's not for you, but yeah. it should, it should be. It would raise the level of everybody because that's the truth. There is no CPL filter on that shit. Yeah. Yeah. There's no Photoshop on that shit. It's raw. It's it's eight hours of what you really did, and let's show it to everybody. What do you guys think about editing photos on Instagram? Um, <laughs> editing like smoothing it out and all that. No. Uh, there's levels, right? Are you doing yeah. like just an Instagram filter to take out the redness? Or are you photoshopping? Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. we do the CPL. You, you're familiar with the CPL? Is that the um, a little filter yeah. on the, head, on the to camera. To take away the glare. I tried that once. Yeah. I'm a big dumb dumb now. So but it's more for like <laughs> realism, <laughs> like yeah. heavy realism, because there's a lot of reds in ours. Yeah. yeah. So that lowers the redness and it brings out the blacks. Okay. It actually brings out more of the redness. Have you noticed that? Certain ones, yeah. though. Certain, I don't, I don't know why. Certain areas, it's too red and sometimes it captures it. 
right? I think it's the skin, how it reflects back. What, what I do for most of my tattoos, I, I, I love using a CPL filter. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it gives it that pop. And I mainly do that for my clients. And then if you keep watching my reel, towards the end, I have one with the natural light. Without oh, that's the cool. CPL filter. So I have both. And mm -hmm. I, that's just the way I like to do it. Just because I know the artists of, I mean, the mindset of other tattoo artists, you know? Yeah. But I don't agree debate. with the adding the extra white. The extra yeah Photoshop white <laughs> yeah I think I st I I draw the line for me at Instagram filters mm. and I like the CPL if I could figure it out I'd use that <laughs> we'll teach you after yeah. Yeah. If you, but uh, if you give me that guy's number yeah, for if the you're genius photoshopping <laughs> it gets into a gray area yeah I started I did it with a couple posts but then I just stopped because I I was doing like my edited version with a filter to take the redness out and then the raw photo yeah. and posting them side by side so people could see right. but then and I think ultimately it's like there's no difference except it's just red. What I started not. seeing is that people are using Remy now on their tattoos. Oh shit! Oh really? Yeah. So to clean like, it? Yeah, to clean it up. Yeah. What's Remy? So Remy is like if you have an old blurry picture, right? You pass it through that app and it just cleans it all up. So it's it all cleans like up an old photo, room. dude. It makes it perfect. That's and now it. they're oh. getting the tattoo and running it through there. So of course it's gonna pick up, you know, shaky the, lines and clean them up. And, uh, that's a little. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. You know what? <laughs> ultimately, dude. I really think it's not, we can do whatever the hell we want. It's True. the client, how lazy are they or how diligent over there. I've heard, I like this quote, that you get the tattoo you deserve sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if you're not asking for healed work photos, you're not doing, yeah. Or you're not checking their past work and their, and yeah. their reels or, you know what I'm saying, or their lives. I used to go live last year almost every day. How was that? It was intensive. It was cool, <laughs> but, I, but also what I... What I liked about it is that I got to see my progression, how I tattoo. And then um, if I liked a certain way a tattoo came out, I would go back to that live and I would see like, oh, I used the Bishop Wand for that one. Oh, and I did this, you know. So yeah. it's a documentary that's on my, I like that. on my Instagram. That's another thing. Like we try to educate our clients here as well. Like this is what we're doing. This is what you should look out for. And yeah. then again, um, I think going seeing someone's live is the most important thing because you actually see the, the thing. How, yeah. how it is. What were we talking about, bro? Do you remember? No, not at all. Something about conventions. No, Something I really about conventions. To go to the bathroom. <laughs> no. yeah. I love when, yeah. when we're all like minded and we're just flowing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is perfect, yeah. bro. Alex, you you smart dude, bro. For real. Thanks. Like much success. We're not ending the podcast. It's only I think it's ending yet, but um <laughs> much success it. to that. Thanks. It it just has a high potential, bro. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And go ahead. Well, like as tattoo artists, we, most of us don't have a retirement plan. We don't like, I just started doing a, like a few years ago, but my wife and I started doing like a Roth IRA, right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we realize all of our friends that have normal jobs, you know, like everyone goes, Oh, being a tattoo artist is so cool. You get to make your own schedule. You get to, and like, it is the coolest job in the world, but I don't get paid vacation time off. If I get sick, I don't get paid. If my kids get hurt, I don't get paid. If you know, it's like, I don't have a retirement fund, right? If I don't set one up myself, there's no 401k. And I know the industry is changing. There's, there's shop owners that are doing the, you know, trying to make that happen for their, their artists and stuff and like props to them. But so all that to say is like, uh, you know, I hope it's successful because I, I do need something. Beyond, it will be, bro. You yeah, know, you know, something maybe that even I because can pass the, down to my kids and all that stuff. Because as tattoo artists ourselves, we, no bullshit aside, like, it is a valuable tool. Yeah. The, the the product works. The the problem you're gonna have is convincing these hard headed tattoo artists because yeah. what did we talk about behind cameras? They're they're hard to convince, right? Yeah, the, I I think tattoo artists have a natural like bullshit meter, mm -hmm. and walls go up when it comes to hard sells. Like every shop, you know, I I know has people that walk in through the front door to sell them something and. Yeah, I use this analogy with my business partner because we're in the beginning trying to figure out how do we sell this to tattoo artists. And he has a lot of background in like traditional sales. And I'm like, a lot of that's not going to work with tattoo artists. It's like, what do you mean? I'm like, if someone walks through the front door of the tattoo shop, right? Because you're selling to tattoo artists. You're not selling to anybody. <clears throat> and they walk through and they are wanting to sell like some cable contract, right? And they start with like a sales pitch. Most tattoo artists, wall goes up. Yeah. Eh, not going to listen. They don't want to hard sell. And I go, you know who has the most success selling stuff in our tattoo shop when they walk in is the guy that's selling strawberries. <laughs> and you know what his strategy is? Hey, I have strawberries. They're $10. Would you like some? Yeah. And then if we want, we go, yeah. Yeah. So like, that's kind of our approach is like, we have this product. If you need it, if you want it, if you want to try it out, like I try to make it as easy as possible. 
Uh, I always offer, you know, like our, our two week trial period. If you don't like it after that, no questions asked, cancel, no problem. You get all your money back. I've even had people that have tried it for a month and go, you know what? It, I, I went past the trial date, but it wasn't for me. Like if you ask me, I'll give you your money back. I've had, I had a guy who it didn't work out with him and I learned a lot from this. And like I said, in the beginning, I've made a lot of mistakes and I'm aware of that. I'm learning as I go. Uh, but he had bought new business cards with the new business line that comes with LinkedIn tools. And so I reimbursed him for his business cards because he ended up not using our system. And so like, that I always try to do the right thing by the tattoo artists. Cause again, this is my That's community. Like, like I'm not trying to screw anyone over and you know, I, I, like I said, I know I've made mistakes in the past. I'm always learning from it, but always trying to put the tattoo artist first. That's the know? customer service right there. Yeah. I try to like that customer service approach we were talking about earlier with clients. I try to take that with the tattoo artists, you yeah. know, um, it's just hard because they are, you know, they're so different. And yeah. <laughs> sometimes they are. I mean, you got an uphill battle, battle for sure. Yeah. But I think, isn't that the, isn't that the challenge? Yeah, you know that's the fun like, part. You that's know, the fun yeah. part. Yeah. It's you, you have goals within your business partner. Yeah. How many you guys want to sell or subscriptions you want to meet by a certain year? It's yeah. a challenge. And and now you've woken up to a different challenge as, as opposed to, you know, tattoo process. Now it's a sales process. So to you, it's yeah. fun. It's new. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hey, but, I, have a, I have a question that's kind of like side. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something about <clears throat> when they subscribe or, or when they um, trial. trial and do you get to see when they stop the trial? Yeah. So, it, it, uh, oh, like if they decide like not you to see go all it? the background stuff, like, okay, this guy signed up, but then they stopped the trial. Like, how, do you get the report of how many people did the trial and stopped the trial? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we have numbers on that. That's and like kind of going into the more nerdy business side of it. Mm -hmm. Tell us. Uh, so we have, I, I believe it's about, uh, 50% or 30% uh, drop off rate where people sign up for the free trial and don't go through with it. It's a free trial. So I was like, well, is that good or bad? Should we be striving for more or less? And so I did some research on a, like similar for like a software or something where there's no risk up front. You don't have to like pay a hundred bucks and then get your money back. It's just mm -hmm. free. Anyone can sign up right now for a two week trial. What's the retention rate? And I think it was like something like 10 to 20% was good. 30% was great. 50% was like incredible. So we were sitting there going like, man, only 50% of people stick with it thinking like, oh, we need to do better. And then I was like, actually, we're doing pretty good. But I think a lot of that is we kind of through the ads and through the demo video, try to like be really clear about what it is. So yeah. if someone's not genuinely interested, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, like they probably won't go through the process of signing up. And do you get the feedback of why they dropped out? Yeah, we do. And, um, you know, like I said, it's not for everyone. I think yeah. the number one piece of feedback we get is that setting it up is complicated. And we try to be sense. very upfront with that. Like it is a complex problem that we're solving. So the solution is complex. Yeah. Setting it up is difficult. It's going to take some time. What we're working on and focusing on right now is like, how are we going to maximize our customer service in that two week uh, time period to where, you know, there's these onboarding videos. There's a step you go through like step by step, but not everyone is as technological sa uh, tech savvy and, and yeah. they have. So our focus right now in this like next year, we're really trying to focus on growing, but I think the biggest way we get to that is through walking people through that setup time. That's what I was going to say. Like, I know, uh, going back to square, yeah. if you're having trouble with that, they'll send a technician to you and they'll help you set everything up. Yeah. So maybe you guys could do that just online, like with, during zoom or and all that. Yeah. So we, we definitely offer <clears throat> that. We, we try to, so there's automated messages cause like we use the system too. Right. Yeah. So when you sign up, it's like, Hey, here's the onboarding videos. And then there's a follow-up one. Hey, how's the setup going? Do you have any questions? And then from there we can go, you know, if we start getting questions from someone as they're setting up. We go, Hey, if you got time, let's jump on a zoom call. Let's schedule it for this week. And we'll walk you through the process or a lot of times, cause I can actually go in on the back end and like set stuff up for people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's like, if the solution, the problem is simple enough, you know, but like walking them through it, it's, I'm like, I'll just go fix it for you. You know, yeah, it's always right. going like, all right, your calendar set yeah. up properly now. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so I try to like really focus on that. But again, the problem is it's me and my business partner doing all two. those roles. Yeah. So the next positions we're looking to fill is sales and customer service. What you paying, bro? 
<laughs> I need a little side hustle. Right now, I nothing. My, like, uh, the people we're looking at is my best friend for sales and my wife for customer service. It's so. an apprenticeship. Yeah. <laughs> for your business. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, know you have a potential to just grow because it's yeah. definitely a problem and uh, a solution to a problem. And that's your up, upside. You know what I'm saying? There's not. There's a lot of artists that are not even, they don't even have iPads yet. So yeah. much, uh, much less have their own um, CRM system. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're, they don't know about that. that and saying? that's a great like comparison. I even, I think used that in an ad video or maybe, maybe it was an old one, but like I remember when iPads came out and I was tattooing, we were still using tracing paper and red pencils to get people to change over to iPads was a huge hurdle. Huge. I resisted it as yeah. long as I could. And then once I tried it, I was like, Oh, this is easier. It is saving me time. Like, same with the wand, same with rotary pens. Like I was, you know, loyal to the coil. I like, I tuned them, I built them. I knew how to work on them. And like super grateful. I learned that knowledge in my apprenticeship, but then man, at a certain point, I was like, is this the, the one I, when it came to the wand, the Bishop wand, it's like, okay, it can do everything. I can't believe I'm saying it, but yeah. it can. So, you know, these little innovations and, and I think that inked and tools or, or having a CRM or having some kind of management system is kind of that next step. Like, yeah. yeah, you can fight it as long as you want, but. And how many people talk shit about those things too? Oh, the iPads a, and the rotaries? A lot. A lot. Yeah. They're still talking shit. They are. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. I like, yeah. like, I like a little controversy and some debate. Like, let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, oh, go ahead. Um, just a side question. Cause you mentioned that you tattoo five days out of the week. Uh -huh. And then you said that you're answering all these emails and you're uh -huh. working on this. So then when, when is your free time? I don't have it. Uh, like <laughs> His free time is his, his hustle. So right? I work Monday through Friday as my like tattoo schedule. Mm -hmm. And I do two to three tattoos a day. Um, so when I wake up early in the morning, I wake up, work out, get the kids fed and all that stuff. Then I go into the uh, studio slash office, work on inked and tools stuff. Then I start my tattoo day. And all throughout the day, I'm, checking in on messages uh then at the end of the day i work a little bit on it and then you know go home dinner put the kids down and then i sit down at usually like 9 or 10 11 at night start drawing for the next day and still doing emails and replies usually in bed around 12 or 1 o'clock and then like up at 6 or 6 30 the next day to wow. do again that's monday through friday saturday my wife works all day so i'm with the kids all day so there's no free time there. Uh, and I'm on my phone working those That's days dope. too. And then Sunday is like our only family day where oh, my wife and I both have off work. We go to church uh, and then we try to like do like a little date or something. Yeah. yeah. Not a date because we got the kids. So a kid, a date with the kids, date you know, like go out yeah. to lunch or something. That's but cool. yeah. So Sunday is like my free day. Uh, but I say it's not free time. Cause like if I didn't have kids or a wife, what would I be doing? I don't know, man, like going on a hike, I'd be, you know, surfing yeah. or doing something. Uh, I do get, I guess I should say in the early mornings, I'll go surf sometimes. And that's like good free time for me. Dope. That's oh, yeah. dope, bro. Yeah. But so I still busy. Stay busy. <laughs> that's the thing. Like that's the, that's the part that people don't see. Like when you're starting something up, you really don't have any free time until nope. it starts going by itself. And yeah. sometimes it takes years, years. And that's yeah. the other thing too. The, the must be nice, you know, like you get yeah. that all like, Oh, must be nice. Uh, like, Oh, how you just have this thing. And it's like, man, you weren't there the year of every morning before going to tattoo, having these meetings developing, mm -hmm. like there's so much that goes into it. And you know, I'm not, I'm not retiring off this. I'm not making millions of dollars, you know, like I'm, it's a nice little bit of extra money for sure. But like, yeah, I'm not getting rich off it. It definitely wasn't easy. Yeah. <laughs> Still well, isn't. Well, I, I see it as it will make you rich, bro. It will. It's going to be, you know, it, you have to put in that work, but obviously it's such a perfect tool, man. It, Thanks. Uh, I, ha I haven't, disclaimer, I haven't tried it or anything, but I know that, um, we're all going to need it as we grow because it helps square helps us a lot for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, what are your, we always ask a question to our artists, uh, or interviewers coming in. How, how do you, how do you see the tattoo industry in the next 10 to 20 years? It's a great question. Cause I've, I'm not, I haven't been in it that long. Right. And I've seen it change 
so much, but in like such a recent time. I feel like when I started out apprenticing and, and like my early career, those first three to five years or whatever, were like there was a little bit of change here and there and it was slow change. Like I said, the iPads, the rotaries, those things took time and they happened. And then it feels like just in the last two years, mm. three years, it has just been like rapid, rapid where, yeah. you know, like with TikTok, with social media, with reels, like other business venture. It's just like, it, it just seems to be like changing so fast to where it, even things like apprenticeships versus tattoo schools or sharing information online, you know, like even when I started, that wasn't cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now it seems like, I don't know. I don't know if it's the older generation just kind of giving in or, uh, or the new generation just not caring. And I don't know, I'm not saying it's good or bad. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just changing so fast that it's like, I don't even know if I can keep up. Um, I think that trends that you'll see is probably if I had to guess, uh, more private studios, um, people charging a lot more. I I see tattoos getting a lot more expensive. I think that Mm -hmm. I feel like when I started getting tattooed when I was 18, like 150 bucks an hour was kind of the average. And I think even now that's still kind of an average, uh, maybe people are pushing out to 200 bucks an hour. Then you have people that are like really good at it, charging 400 bucks an hour, you know, but mm-hmm. most artists I think would be in that one to $200 an hour range. Mm-hmm. So it hasn't really changed that much price wise. So I think that'll be a big shift is keeping price up with points. the price of, of living, right? Mm-hmm. Especially if you're an artist in California, Yeah, like, I work super hard. My wife works super hard. We're not buying a house in California anytime soon, you know? <laughs> so like, yeah, maybe the, the prices will start going up. That's so, what I'd, I'd guess. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. Prices are going to go up more um, because people are understanding that this is a high level skill. Yeah. And if, and if the client's approving you as being a high level tattooer, your price is, is, is not determined. Is It doesn't have a ceiling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but I now it's going to go back with just the branding itself. Like more, I feel like more people are going to be branding themselves mm-hmm. and they're going to be creating that brand to that. Um, how do you say it, that? What you might call it? <laughs> <laughs> Brain fart. <laughs> Brain fart. <laughs> well, that luxury brand. You yeah. Know what I mean, um, I got a tattoo from this over here. Yeah. You know, and it cost me this much. Yeah. Um, what do you stacks. have? Yeah. Garage that? Well, mine's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you wanted to go see Mako. You didn't yeah. want to see a tattoo artist. You want to see Mako's work, right? That's yeah. a brand that he achieved it through many years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's uh, that's part of how I feel it's going to be. You know, you, everybody's quick to differentiate themselves because there's so much noise in this industry, dude. You know? And all you have to do is grab your tribe. Yeah. You know? Collect your tribe. Be loyal to that cr- tribe. Be genuine to that tribe. Yeah. And... And just hope that that tribe, parts of those people from the tribe, don't leave you somewhere else. And if they do, it's fine. You know yeah. I mean? Do you believe it's gonna be a lot harder to get into the industry as a professional? I think it'll be easier. You think so? Yeah, I think it'll be harder to be successful. Uh-huh. I think that coming up when I did, being able to have a uh, you know work in a shop where there was walk-ins helped me develop my clientele. Um, but as there's, see, I think it'll be easier to get in. I think it'll be harder to break out to that, like next level of being successful. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just a guess. I don't really know, but, um, back to the pricing, I was just going to say, I have a hard time pricing, you know, I, I I have like too much empathy, I think for the clients where I like, (laughs) and I think, I think back to when I was 18 getting tattooed. I knew what it meant to like work super hard for that money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and I think back to like what I paid for like a half sleeve then and I go, oh, I can't charge them more than that, you know? And it's so dumb, but it's yeah. just like, yeah, I, I have you. a really hard time like charging appropriately. I'm on but, the same boat, bro. Yeah. yeah. Cause you but put yourself I, in your client's shoes. Yeah. Like, yeah. But thankfully yeah. I have these guys, uh, knowledge and wisdom to like help me better gauge how I should price a couple things. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, as a last year or so, uh, me and um, one of my mentors and coworkers uh, at, when I was at Tattoo Gallery, Heck Tattoo, we would try to like help each other out with pricing because we knew we were like, okay, we need to charge a little more. And then we found like, when you do, your clients don't bat an eye. 
they're expecting because they've been to other shops. They've been, you know, if you're the one still charging <laughs> 150 an hour, uh, they've yeah. been to a shop that's charged them 300 bucks an hour. And so they're not saying when you say, oh, you know, I'll just do 300 bucks for today. You know, they're not going, damn, that's so low. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like, I'm going to tip you five. Yeah. They're in their head going like, heck yeah, I just got this for way less than I should have. Have so you ever got you, the one that that's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, bro. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Take that knife out of your heart. You know? But then when you do say like a more appropriate price, uh, let's say it's 600 instead of 300, right? The I, I've never had a client like, that's so much. Like they're even yeah. still, they're like, okay, no problem. Like, yeah. you know, and I, and we sometimes we'd talk about it after, like, how much do you charge for that? And I'd be like, oh, I charge like 600 bucks. And he's like, what did they say? I'm like, nothing. Man. Like that, they were expecting that. You know? <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> did you say you're just, you know, capitalistic? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, they're expecting it. Yeah, we had pod- many podcasts about pricing and, and we always try to help because it took me and Josh uh, a long time to learn how to have self-worth, you know? Yeah. And a lot of times... Um, Dude, I was fucking... Sorry to cut you off. But I was like, every time we talk about this, I remember like when we were first starting in the garage tattooing, I was scared to charge. I think the most I ever charged was like 200 bucks for like a half a sleeve. Yeah. And it's not one session. <laughs> it was multiple. <laughs> yeah. I think, and I think just to cut it off and not going too deep into this, but I think the, um, what is the, how do I say this? The influx of so much information out there, we we see great tattoos all the time. Mm. That kind of hurts us in thinking that at our work, at our level, we're not worth those prices that so and so is charging. When in reality, there's there's some other artists that are way better than us that don't even price some more than us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So at the end of the day, that information being given by us through social media hurts our own self worth, man. So we have to step back, reanalyze. You know what you want to be worth. If it's an outrageous number, then charge an outrageous number. But then you're gonna see throughout the month if if you have steady clientele coming in. If yeah. it's not, common sense is you're not worth that outrageous number. Yeah. And I'm just saying an X number because everybody prices their own ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you're lower that number to a from outrageous to a comfortable number, and you're getting overwhelmed with pricing with uh, clients. You know, then maybe you're too low. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to gauge with with um, action, you know? I mean, one thing you always say is that you're worth as much as that person's willing to give you. That yeah. client in front of you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? I kind of gauge it sometimes, too. Like, I have, if I have a client who's... I'm, I hope my clients aren't watching this. <laughs> but no, like if I have a client that's, uh, you know, well established in their life, you know, they're very successful. Uh, they own a home. They, you know, all these things, right? I know that their budget is a little more. And my uh, this the flip side is that if I have a client that's super young and they're in school and they're working and they're paying their own way through school, like I give that kid a break because I remember being that kid. I remember how hard it was to make enough money to get a tattoo. So I kind of have like a little bit of a sliding scale. Yeah. And I don't want to say that I'm like, I'm not overcharging the clients that have a good job, but I'm definitely like giving a little break to the, to the like, dude, if you're in school and working, like I respect that, you know. Unless they walk in with Jordans and a Gucci belt, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Here's yeah. your hundred fifty bucks, bro." Then I find out that this generation's way smarter than me, and he's already got a crypto portfolio. Yeah, he has a crypto portfolio. Yeah. You're like, owns a house too. I'm like, ah, never but that's mind. see, that's the beauty of it. It's your prerogative. It's your yeah. business. You yeah. can, and nobody should judge you on your pricing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you should not judge somebody saying, "Man, you're that guy's overpriced." Because yeah. I hear that so much. You know, who's who's to say he's overpriced? Why are you judging yeah. the client for giving them? Ten thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he was happy with the transaction. Yep. So why do you give two cents where where that happened? You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it just comes down to how you feel comfortable pricing people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Comparison is the thief of joy. Ooh, I like that. Where's <laughs> that from? Like, I don't know. I heard well, it. <laughs> From my head. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. When you, you know, were saying about looking at other people's work and you yeah. see people are so much better and all that stuff, it's like you're now comparing yourself against the entire world of tattooers. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, and you're just this. Um, you're not putting you're not putting into consideration if they're in a um, in a, a neighborhood where there's more wealth, you know, yeah, that they have more disposable income. 
and or maybe they're in the area where they're not that much money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I I want to touch base on something you said. It's like you have your own, um, you know, um, as far as with the clients that uh, you see, like there's a young kid and there's somebody that's well off, right? Yeah. I used to think like that, but then I started realizing that like I have cooks, bro, that pay me a full day session, you know, yeah. that are just cooks and they'll save up their money to get a tattoo from me. So if I have that experience, why am I going to lower it on on somebody? Why am I going to if they say, can you do it any less for I'm talking for like a businessman or something? Yeah. You know, I'm going to say like, well, homeboy over here, that's just a cook saved up all his you know tips just to get tattoo from me. You're telling me that, you know, you're on a business and you don't want to pay my, you know, my rates. Then to me, that's why I said, just know your worth, set a certain um, threshold or price per session or whatever, because yeah. that's how we charge usually by half days or full days. Yeah. And if you do get people to pay you that, cool. If you don't, well, that's the prerogative. Eventually, yeah. you just got to stay in one. And, it, and it's worked for What us. you realize is that person that's saving all that money for that session, you could tell they're more into it than the person trying to get that discount for it. For sure. Yeah, and I don't I don't ever negotiate. Like, mm-hmm. if someone asks for a discount, like they, they probably won't get it. But it's, to me, I, and it's just dumb because it's just I see myself in them. But it's yeah. like, it's that kid who doesn't ask for a discount, who I know saved enough to pay the full price, but I also know, like, he's paying his own way through everything. Yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. And that's cool, you yeah. know? Because I also think of, that's a human being right there. Yeah. yeah. And if you know a little backstory of the person, why not? Who cares? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and if you don't know about the other person that, that you get a tattoo full day, it's fine. You But if you know a little inside, you feel fine with it, give them the discount. That's fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of us. We're not like printers. You know what I'm saying? We're, yeah. we're human. At, yeah. Don't forget we're human. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? And I w- so day. I worked in restaurants for like 12 years, 10 years, something like that, before as a tattoo artist, as a server. And so something I always do is I always compare like a day of tattooing to a day of serving tables. And I, and I think that actually is stopping me from raising my prices <laughs> because of like, you know, even if like, God, let's just say I had a day where I only did one little walk-in tattoo and I made a hundred bucks. I'll still think back to like, man, when I was a server, even to make a hundred bucks, that was probably at least five, seven tables, you know, a few hours of work and serving is not easy work. Yeah, it's not. So I always compare that. And to me, it just like, I, it keeps me going and keep me excited. Like keeps me humble of like, man, I, if I had to be serving tables still, like to make that much money in a day would have, you know, taken yeah. me all day, a double shift, yeah. you know? So keep that perspective. I think we take for granted too. Like the amount of, the amount that, I guess the amount of money you could get now as a tattoo artist compared to working at a nine to five. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and some of us lose it. Like, we lose that thought, like, fuck, I used to work uh, eight hours to get 90 bucks. Yeah. And then they, well, you know, minimum wage was like nine, ten dollars Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's good to keep that perspective, I think, you know. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, let's let's get to know you a little bit more. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are, let's who, are tra- <laughs> who are three uh, tattoo artists in your industry that you look up to or that are? As far as even with business or tattooing? Yeah. Um, so I've got, like, obviously, uh, from the shop I was at, uh, all those guys, you know, I'll put them at the top, but then I'll do, like, the next three after that. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but so artistically, uh, Griffin Gersey at Torch Tattoo. Okay. That guy, to me, does not miss. Every tattoo he does is it's perfect. And it's, like, a very cool style. He does a lot of, like, dot shading. That kind of ends up looking realistic, kind of traditional, illustrative, and he just like like I said, doesn't miss like Got every it. tattoo is solid. Um, I've always looked up to Dan Smith uh, okay. of Captured Tattoo. I really like his work as well. Um, and then let's see, it's hard to pick. <laughs> I know it's a hard <laughs> question. Hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bob Tyrell. Okay. For his like black and gray and the smoothness of his gray tones. Yeah. Like another one where it's like doesn't miss. You know, you look at his healed tone, like the way he gets light tones. I'm like, I'd, I'd pay money to take a class from him on that. Yeah. 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 yeah it's on YouTube. Tone. It is. <laughs> <laughs> he studied it already three times. I did. <laughs> so. That's cool, man. Those, I, I don't, from those, I only know, I think Dan Smith and Bob Tyrell. I don't yeah. know the other guy, but. 
Uh, I mean, I've heard of, you know, I've seen their work, but yeah. that's cool, man, that we all get inspired by different ones. Uh, what about, um, like, where do you see yourself in uh, in the next five years, bro? Next five years, um, super excited that I have no idea. Like, that's dope. I've got a lot of different paths, um, you know, working in a private studio now and then seeing where that goes. Do I end up back at a shop? Do I move out of state? Do I split my time between two states? Do I stay in California? You know, like, do I tattoo more, tattoo less? How far along is inked in tools in five years? I have no idea. I'm perfectly content if everything stays exactly the same, but super excited for whatever comes. Like, just kind of open. Like, I've always been very open to opportunity. I think if something comes your way, see it through, you know? And so I'm excited to see what happens. You plan but on definitely, it. oh, sorry, definitely a lot more guest spots and conventions in the next like year. Nice. I, yeah, I want to hit that hard this year. We're so down. if any shops got uh, guest spots across the country, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> Another personal question. You plan on getting any uh, new tattoos? Yeah, I've got to get my son's name. Uh, he's 11 months and I haven't oh, got wow. his name yet. Right, right, yeah, his name's Noah. So I've got a spot here I want to do. Uh, <laughs> I like that he's like, I got this little spot right here. <laughs> I know. So my dot, but this tattoo here is my daughter's name. Okay. And I got it really big. And I, someone made a joke, like, what are you going to do if you have another kid? And I was like, I'll tell them that they should have been born first. <laughs> you know, like, she got the prime real estate. <laughs> so then I had another kid and I'm like, oh, I really do do need a spot for him. So you can do his name here. It'll probably be the next one. And then I got to do my back too. Dope, too man. still. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Mostly traditional tattoos. Yeah. Mostly traditional or black and gray. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, I, a lot of my tattoos are jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got like a Wu Tang Weezer W there. Like that says never forget for a bird that I had for two weeks. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just I covered in like, you well, know, the stance socks, the little logo. Like yeah. I have that tattooed on my ankles. <laughs> you know, one idea I thought right now that you just described it so well is why isn't why isn't someone just going around with their own channel and just interviewing people and like, how'd you get this tattoo? Like, you know, the stories story. behind it. Yeah. I think yep. people would I go. I think Ink just started that. Yeah? yeah I just saw one like of the Like just videos. literally walking down the street and be yeah. like, hey, you, let me see that Weezer <clears throat> tattoo you have. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. tell me a story about it. Those you know street saying? interviews are super captivating on like Instagram reels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought about doing something like that with my clients because, you know, they always ask like, what do you drive and like, what do you do for work? Yeah. So that'd be cool. Like after I tattoo a client, you know, I'll show the tattoo you just got and like, what do you do for work? I don't know. Just oh, okay. put yeah, out there. That'd be cool. There's a freebie for content <laughs> yeah, for <nah>. someone. <laughs> yeah. Usually my clients are all fucking tired after a full day. So yeah. like, you know I what I mean? <laughs> and then before it, you're just focused on trying to get everything. So yeah, I would see a little hard, but that somebody that can do it. I, I think somebody that can do small work right now has yeah. that time after. They can, hey, let me interview. Yeah. I'm genius, man. Nice. Bro. This is a great. Really great podcast. Man. I was stoked, yeah. man. You know? yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, we didn't pass Richie's interview, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Richie. Yeah. I haven't seen no flies either. You know? <laughs> oh, um, so we're, tell us again, remind us of where your social media is, where they can find you, man, if they want to get to know you more and yeah. we want to get tattooed by you. For sure. So uh, my Instagram is Alex Coulter Tattoo, C O U L T E R. Uh, my website where you can book is alexcoulter.com. Mm. Um, I'm about to drop a bunch of merch, all kind of Costco Kirkland ripoffs. Because <laughs> uh, I always wear my Kirkland sweater in my videos. And okay. so I was like, oh, I'll play That's on cool. that. And then Inked in Tools uh, for the Instagram and for our website. Uh, there's a demo video on there. And you can always reach out directly if you have questions about it. And mm -hmm. Check it out. And Inked in Tools is the app, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it's kind of spelled like LinkedIn, but inked. I figure you kind of used it for like kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. Or and then also play on like being inked in the inked. book. You know, uh, like let me ink you in or pencil you in. Sorry. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you guys a lot, man. That was oh, super man. fun. Very so insightful. Out, bro. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna try to do more podcasts too. So. Yeah, you know that side note on that is that we're just feel grateful that somebody's like listening now and saying, you know what. I want to go in there and be part of it. And you're mm -hmm. one of the first, first to start. Cause we usually were reaching out to people, you know? Yeah. And we had a couple others that had hit us up and the fact that you're willing to come down, bro, and just be part of our podcast and insight um, is a really appreciative, man. Yeah. Thank well, you. And to that note, just real quick, another thing for like people out there, 
always DM people and reach out. Like I can't tell you how many times I've reached out to someone I thought would be like too big or wouldn't read my message. Like I've gotten great opportunities from that. Like there was a, a black work artist who did like blackout tattoos, you know, and everyone's like, I wonder what ink he uses. And I was like, I'll DM him. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, like I'm nothing, right. I, but I DM them and, and like, you'd be surprised how willing people are to share yeah. information yeah. or talk with you. Like, so as the kids say, shoot your shot, like shoot reach out to people, you know, it, you no, people don't take that opportunity, but you yeah, definitely yeah. should. Perfectly said, man. Oh yeah. All well, right, young blood. Thanks for <laughs> coming through, bro. Honestly, Appreciate based off of hearing what you're saying as far as your schedule, you know, you're like amongst those people that work hard and they end up being super successful. You know, like Elon Musk, those backstories and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, I really see that with your company. And, Thanks. Um, so I wish you nothing but the best in your journey. And uh, hopefully we get to link up soon for that little art thing. But uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, thanks again, man. And uh, if you guys want to reach out to him, you guys know who's at. And uh, see you guys on the next one.